Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the chat tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, how to double your money cutting grass. Also doing some landscaping work. What do we got first in the chat? Peak got power. She was here way, way, way long time ago at 736 this morning. Hmm. I got to give her three wrenches for that one. Then we got Paul Wright, his lawns himself, his second. Shredda, how you doing? I see you got a new lawnmower. Hey, Frank, I see you're coming to the dark side. Thank you for joining the chat. Uh, I'll do a little chat for a couple minutes on the lawn care. It won't be too long if you guys stick around for a couple minutes, 20 minutes or so. Um, that'd be great if you can. If not, I understand. Uh, I'm going to take you for a ride by my house to a place. Uh, it's called Pigman Road. It's an urban legend. It's pretty cool. I did some stories on it in regards to uh, documentaries like on uh, the Travel Channel. It's pretty cool. So I'll take it for a little ride. It's right by my house, literally. So, But it's just an urban legend, but it's pretty funny how many people uh, really believe in it. But some of it actually did happen in regards to a train wreck that happened back in the 1860s. So it's pretty cool. So thank you for coming on, everybody. Let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to talk about doubling your uh, money. And when I say doubling your money... It's going to be a little extra work on you because uh, nothing is easy. You got to go out yourself and you got to make it happen. Uh, nobody's looking to give you any free money. So here I am. I'm at a house last year. It's almost fall, it looks like, because the leaves are changing colors. I'm just going to give you a video in the background to look at as we're talking. So in regards to doubling your money, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of hard work. But like I said, you believe in yourself and you can make it happen. Uh, so here's a couple of things I'm thinking about doubling your money. I just want to get my work done, most of it in the beginning of the week. So by the end of the week, I can take it a little bit easier and move on to other jobs. Because as in cutting grass, uh, grass cutting is like a business, just like a gas station. And uh, the weather is beautiful here in Oklahoma or Daytona, Orlando. I don't know where I got Oklahoma from. Man, I can't read tonight. But anyways, that's pretty cool. I'm glad it's nice down there. It's uh, by my house, I want to say it's uh, 39 and sunny, so it got cold again. I'm hoping to start cutting grass in about uh, Monday, the day after Easter, so maybe 10 days away. I got to get on top of them. So to get back to uh, uh, doubling your money, I'm just going to show you a couple ways that I would recommend that works for me. Uh, it should work for you. If you're, a, uh, you know, got multiple employees, it might not work because you're going to have probably have a set schedule where you're going to want to pay them X amount of dollars per day and you don't want to pay no overtime. I'm going to talk about that real briefly in this video also. So that's just me. I'm having a good time cutting the grass. I got my headphones on, singing some music to myself. I'm daydreaming, even though I'm cutting grass physically and mentally I'm at the beach or... I'm driving my car around somewhere or, or thinking about what I'm going to do later on this evening. It's a fun gig. You know, you make your own hours, do what you got to do. And it's really, I don't want to say it's easy money, but if you do a good job, people are going to call you back. So I'm going to jump off this video and, and show you what I'm talking about here in regards to uh, doubling your money. So I, uh, I tried adding a second camera now to get more uh, functions available using this uh, StreamYard. It's not as easy as I thought, so I'm still working on it this afternoon. We put an hour or two in there, and I'm also uh, going to add that second camera so it'll just be on me so I could actually uh, take my pages and move them around just like you guys do with your charts in regards to uh, the stocks and that, and I can look up cryptos possibly and other stuff uh, as we're talking. So. We could jump on and have some fun. Oh, Frank, I forgot to tell you. Thanks for sending your cold this way. You guys had a cold couple days, and now it's over me right now. So next time, blow it up to the north so it misses me. I'm sick and tired of winter, even though it was not a bad winter. Okay, so I made a little uh, cheat sheet. I'm trying to figure out how to make a little a white drawing board diagram in the background to draw. I'm not that technical advanced, so I did it old school. Uh, so let's just say your daily work hours are, this could be you could work one day, three days, five days, whatever your schedule is. 
Well, let's just say you actually are working from nine to three. So say you get up at whatever time, 6 30, 7 o'clock, let the dog out, do what you got to do, get ready to go to work, get the trailer loaded, uh, stop and get gas. And so the actual time of actually cutting grass for myself is really nine to three. I answer phone calls about 8, 8.30. I try to tell people that are customers to call me between 8 and 9 because you'll catch me for sure because I'm always loading up. Unless it's a rain day. If it's a rain day or I think it's going to be a rain day, excuse me, I go back to bed. Uh, so I'll tell you how the rain day thing works. Uh, if I go back to bed, it won't rain the day. But if I do load up my trailer and go strike to cart, or trying to start cutting grass, it's going to rain. So uh, depending on what time of the season it is, um, in the beginning, you're going to have to work hard to stay on top of it. So I'd recommend, you know, trying to work through the rain day. But come, you know, the middle of the season, you pray for a rain day, hoping that you got some time off. Uh, so say you, you work nine to three. In the beginning, beginning of the season, you could cut 12 lawns. Say that's two an hour. You know, it might be slower than your equipment. Uh, if you got help, you might be able to cut, you know, more than two an hour. You might be able to get three or four an hour. Uh, depending on your help and uh, the growing conditions. The growing conditions got a lot to do with, with what you could get done in a day and not be overexerted uh, cutting the grass. So I figured from 9 to 3 in the beginning of the season, I could do about 12 by myself, and I do 18. You know, 15 to 18 would be a good day for myself, even in the drier weather. So you take that and you times it by $20 to cut, and that's your daily money that you're going to make for the day. So what I recommend, this will make your day easier, uh, especially in the dog days of summer when the lawns aren't growing so fast, but it just gets too hot, say, you know, around 10, 11, noon, 1, it gets pretty hot. You know, I'm sure down by Shred on Florida, it gets even hotter. Uh, but over here, it's really, you know, when I say hot, it's not hot. It's the bugginess that gets to you because we're not used to the mugginess up here in Buffalo. Uh, so when it's like 80 degrees and like 60, 70 percent humidity, you feel it. You don't even move when you're sweating. So I would work from nine to three. I'd take a break. I'd come home, let the dog out, get something to eat, uh, do something. I got it, whatever I got to do, uh, get the mail. And I'd go back out and I would start at like, say, 430. And I'd work to 730. And in that little bit of time, I would get uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 lawns done. And in the evening, everything's totally dried out. There's no dew. The grass cuts real nice. You don't have to mess around at the end of, the, of each lawn trying to make it look pretty. It pretty much looks good. So in that little bit of time, you can cut 10 lawns at $25 to $30 or 12 lawns, and you just picked up an extra three, $400 right there on top of your daily work. So in my what I do myself, that half a day, that uh, three hours of work I go out for in the evening, it'll cut a half a day of work out of my workload. So if I did it twice a week, which I don't, I just do one, one, one day a week extra in the evening. But if you did it twice a day, that would free up um, one extra day of work. And uh, like I said, your grass cutting business is like a, a gas station where you make money all the time, but you make the extra money when people buy cigarettes or snacks or drinks. And that's where you make the extra money on my business doing such things as landscaping. So that's just to double your money in regards to having free time to make more money. But it also depends on how many customers you get. So I got a little, uh, a little diagram. I'm going to talk about money right now. Sunday is not but every day it's like starting over. Okay, so here you might laugh, it'd be funny. Uh, it's considered a totem pole. I'm not a good drawer, so I just made something real quick. Uh, I had a, a couple people already. Uh, two people responded back, so their houses are for sale. If I could just do them on a month to month basis. I told them, yes, I have to do it. I had one senior customer already respond back. She wants to cut every two weeks. Um, I don't think I'm going to be, honor, be able to honor that wish from her because uh, I'm not going to cut your grass every two weeks uh, for half the pay and do double the work. Uh, but if she wanted to pay me double the money and do half the work, I'd be all for it. So I think on that one, it's been an okay customer. I would rate her as a C customer. So I'm probably going to pass on it. Because uh, I just don't need the aggravation in the first 10 weeks of uh, doing it. After the first 10 weeks, it really wouldn't be such a big deal. Uh, but I'm looking to, uh, you know, have X amount of dollars uh, per month 
and not have to worry about doing extra work. So if you look at a totem pole, um, I'm, I don't know how hard money's going to be this year. I haven't started yet with grass cutting, but uh, when we had this problem back in 08, um, when gas got high, I really didn't have much of a problem with my business because with the gas prices went up when we, when we were in, uh, I want to say, Kuwait with Saddam Hussein, Iraq, uh, the gas prices made it to as high as they are now, but it was just the gas prices that were high. They really, everything else was up just a little bit, like, you know, for food stuff, but it wasn't out of control like it is now. And so we weren't short on supplies. Uh, so if you look at the uh, my total poll at the top is rent or your loan on your house, your mortgage, and then you got to pay all your bills and you got to buy food and you got to pay your car loan, whatever it might, whatever it might be that you have. And so you see, uh, there's the paper boy. And then if you look to the right next to the paper boy on a totem pole is the lawn man. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, the lawn man and the paper boy, you know, they might get discontinued. Uh, they might get fewer, uh, you know, days of paper. Uh, people might not spend as much money in regards to uh, a trubbing, uh, trimming shrubs or doing extra around the house because uh, a lot of the, the people that I work for, well, most of them are seniors, but some of the other people, they have a, a nicer houses. They get get up in the morning. The husband goes to work at 6 o'clock. Uh, the wife, uh, she puts the kids on the bus, and she goes to work for the rest of the day. And so they're pretty much gone, but, but they're nicer properties on some of them. So they both have to work to afford it unless, you know, they got one of them as a doctor or something, and that's a different story. But uh, uh, the husband, he's really not going to want to cut the, cut the long guy out um, cause he's not going to want to come home from work and have to worry about cutting the grass. Uh, if he's professional, uh, he's going to want to come home, uh, do whatever he might do, golf, play tennis. Um, those are just some examples. Um, so the wife might, you know, the wife might get done from working and she might enjoy, uh, going to the, uh, gym, maybe say, for instance, if she's not going to cut that down. So unfortunately the, the lower on a total pull you are, the chances are you might, uh, you might get cut in some ways in regards to doing extra work. So just, I haven't, you know, I'm just getting started right now. I got a couple, I got three mulch jobs lined up, which are good because they'll pay the bills for the following month. So I'm talking about the grass cut money. So I'm just, uh, just kind of figuring it out. Cause like I said, everything is up, you know, financial wise for people. So, so they might, you know, they might also possibly, uh, cancel or have less amount of money to give to you. So you might have to, uh, you know, adjust yourself accordingly. I got a little video here of me uh, uh, doing some landscaping work, for instance. Um, I got this house right here. Been a customer for probably almost 30 years now. Real good people. Unfortunately, they're getting older. And uh, either they're going to be selling or they're going to move in away. Uh, I got this little electric Roby hedge trimmer. I'll tell you. You wouldn't think this thing does good work, but man, this is this is the bomb. This this gets the job done. This is uh probably the second cutting towards the fall. I started videotaping, so it's my second time doing it. But you see how fast it goes. I like staying on top of it. Um, I do got some uh some customers that are really good customers that I have a good conversation with. We laugh, we talk, and I actually trim their bushes every two weeks. Because uh, I stay on top of them and I want them so tight that it looks professional, like a we took a picture of it for better homes and gardens. But like I said, we got to see where the season takes us because uh, uh, I can't work for free, uh, but I also do need the work. So, you know, I'm going to have to adjust myself just like everybody else is adjusting yourselves in regards to uh, how much money they got to spend. So that's all I'm thinking about uh, for people uh, doubling their money in uh, grass cutting, landscaping. Uh, like I said, if you do a little bit more work on one day or two days, in my opinion, that's the secret to doing it, to freeing up some time. Because, uh, you know, come Friday, you don't want to work on Friday. You just want to, you know, do whatever you do. Wash your car at home. That might be fun for you. Uh, you know, like I said, that that's all up to you. But, but you don't want to, uh, you know, be stuck cutting grass on Friday unless, unless it, uh, you, know, you have a bad week in regards to weather, then you got no choice, so you got to eat that once in a while. Uh, that's part of the game. So that's that's where I'm looking at, and I just uh, 
I think that, you know, the more time that you put into it, get the stuff done quicker. And as long as you do a good job, you should be in good shape. But we'll find out for me in the next couple of weeks to what's going on, you know. Um, so that's me trimming. I'm not going to show you that me trimming anymore. I don't want to give away all the secrets to get it done real quick. But this little house here, this is a $400 job. I could do it in one hour. Uh, there's no mulch. I don't mulch it unless they want mulch. And I had an extra hundred bucks to it. And that mulch probably cost me $60. And then I got an hour time. So I don't make no extra money. Uh, but, but it's a good customer. They pay very good for uh, getting grass cut. And they always pay on time. So I got no problems there. So I lose a bit of that. Shared over Twitter. Uh, there ain't no people, Frank. I hate to say it. It's, it's right now. I don't even ask nobody to, to hit the like button or anything anymore because I'm just happy to show up and say hi. It's just, uh, you know, maybe it's just the season because it's starting to get a little bit warmer. And uh, I know people got 10 million people, you know, 10 million uh, things to do. So if I can just get somebody to stop by just for one minute and say hi, uh, that means the world to me. Um, you know, we got a good group of us here from Clay's channel that stick together and help each other out, you know, trying to get to the next level. Uh, I'm not sure. I was hoping my uh, my one friend I met on a computer, Drew, he's got almost 800 subscribers. I was going to ask him if he's got any secrets on how to do it or hi, or uh, how he got to almost 800 people. Uh, he's got a lot of friends on his channel that he talks to from across the country, and they're all a lot of them are close to a thousand, but nobody got to that that you know one thousand mark yet. So. I'm not sure. I'm going to take you guys for a ride now in the car because you guys stuck around. This is pretty cool. Uh, I got some cool music to this one. This is on my page. Uh, I don't want to play the music now because I don't want to take a chance of uh, uh, getting, uh, you know, slapped in the wrist by. Uh, I didn't start the video here. Let me go back for a second. Hey, Pika, how are you? You can't be working. It's Saturday. You got to be off. Like I said, you work too much. I got to start this again. I didn't hit, forgot to hit this thing. But anyways, Frank, if you get a chance, uh, just play the music in the background. You're going to laugh when you see it. So let me see if I get this to start playing. This is right by my house. And like I said, it's called it's called uh, a pig man. Angola, New York. Angola is A-N-G-O- L A. Yeah, Pika was first. Yep. Yeah. That's for sure. Pika was here at 736. But anyways, Frank, this is pretty cool. This little street trip right at my house. Uh, we go down there. We do a lot of burnouts, uh, do a little bit of drag racing, monkeying around. Uh, the police around here are pretty cool. They really don't bother you. Uh, I live in an area that's considered rural residential. If you just go around the corner, though, it's like living in a city where they got water and public sewer. Out here, I got septic and uh, well water, which I'll never do again, especially with farm animals. Uh, I really got to watch my water usage during the months of uh, July and August because uh, it gets pretty dry out here. But this is pretty cool. This is the first bridge you're coming to right by my house. And this actually isn't the, the bridge that they're considering on Pigman Road in Golden, New York. Um, the kids like to hang out there. It's totally pitch black. Um it's pretty funny, especially when you come around like October, which I never thought about it till this year because I never did no live broadcasting because they never would let nobody with less than a thousand subs uh, do a live stream. But now that I, uh, I uh, just like you did, Frank, I asked them to do a, uh, a live stream and they accepted it. So it's pretty cool. So you're coming around this little bend over here and there's nothing back here at all. It's just a little road that cuts through. Uh, to two main roads. Uh, so this right here, this is actually just considered this bridge we're getting to right now. This is actually the bridge where this accident happened. And uh, this is the road. This is the actual bridge. It's from the 1800s. I don't know the exact date, but it's pretty, pretty cool. It's all, you know, dilapidated, falling apart. Uh, kids write sayings on the walls and you never know what you see. And if you uh, look at my other videos, my one friend, Ariel, uh, he put a pig man mask on. We made another video. It's called Pig Man, You Decide. It's right next to this video. I got a lot of hits on it. So that's it. That's that little bridge right there. But uh, but back in the day, when I first, when, if you watched the beginning of this video from the very beginning, it's by my house. 
and you turn on the side street right by my house, and there used to be, uh, I'm not sure if they were German or if they were from, uh, what country do you think they were from? They were German. Okay, they were German, and they actually were uh, like a slaughterhouse. And so in regards to, so say I just turned around this little, this little side area, and I'm going back through. Uh, but they were Germans. They were uh, first generation. They come to Buffalo. Uh, they didn't speak English or nothing. And they actually had a, a slaughterhouse over here. And I guess back in the day, uh, they used to have a lot of the kids around here were doing a lot of mischief, which there's no kids around here anymore, really, unless you get to the city part. And they did a lot of mischief. So they would actually like take a, a, the pig heads and a, a cut them off and they would put them like on broomsticks or pieces of wood just to try to to scare the locals away. So that, that actual family, uh, there's just a, either the daughter left. I'm not hurt. I'm not sure if it's a daughter or a niece, but uh, she still owns the state house uh, where they're from. But this is all just uh, like vacant uh, hunting land now. So that, that, that is definitely, it's a true story. And this bridge that I'm under right now that you see um, about a mile before it, uh, there actually was a, a, train derailment in the 1860s that was really legitimate and back in the day they used to use uh, coal in these passenger cars to keep the cars warm in the winter time and uh somehow that train in the winter time it derailed and it actually flipped over and it, it killed a lot of people um just from like being uh you know burned by like the hot coals and that so that that part is a true story but but as for the pigman legend it's all a bunch of baloney uh, I lived at this house now at our farm for just about 10 years. We never seen him once. Uh, we got an old neighbor across the street. He's been here since the forties, his family, they go on probably 120 acres and way back in the day, they, they owned a hardware store in the city of Buffalo. So they made a lot of coin back in the day. And they, uh, he told me all the stories and all that stuff. And, and I, and we talked to the neighbors cause it's a good laugh. And they actually, up until about five years ago, uh, they would have a, a street party where they'd block the street off by the end of my street. Because if you see I'm driving right now, go another half mile up the road and you'd be at my house. So they would actually block the street off and they would actually have like a, a band playing. Uh, they would do a cookout. You know, you'd be able to drink beer. They were real cool. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, due to the circumstances that they... Uh, Yeah, on the Travel Channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you too type that? I thought Pika typed that. Okay. Duh. But yeah, but this so, but they have uh, like a street party, and they actually they actually made nice hooded sweatshirts and that, and it said I partied with Pigman. It was pretty cool. It was a fun time, it was just like a, you know, like a nice little Fourth of July party, basically. So, but that that was a, you know, pretty interesting. You know, just to, for laughs and giggles. So I'm gonna. This year, I'm going to go uh, come October. Like I said, we get a lot of traffic down here with the kids just messing around, having fun. And I'm going to do a live stream and pretend that, like we've seen something. And maybe I'll get people to, you know, respond, sign up maybe, have some fun. It's just just something for a thought because I don't want to say I'm, a, you know, grasping for air or whatever to try to get people to uh, join up, you know, but – uh it's just, you know, a couple of things because, you know, over the time. Yeah, 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 Pika, my wife's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's her Twitter page, but she lets me use it because everything that I got is hers. And so uh, someday if you get married, hopefully your husband understands it. A happy wife is a happy life. So, you know, even this computer I'm using right now to talk to you, the shirt I got on, that's all her stuff. So she just lets me live here. So, but I get her back because we got a 17 acre property and on Saturday, because I don't feel like cutting grass, I stick her on the lawnmower and she gets to cut the grass for three hours straight. So maybe the joke's on her or the joke's on me. I don't know. So, but that's cool. And Frank, you know, congratulations on uh, uh, four years of, you know, being with your girl, you know, four years really. It goes by in a blink of an eye. Time waits for nobody. So so that's pretty cool. No, Pika, it's not sweet, unfortunately. I need her to cook for me. I need her money, and she needs my money. So, And also, 
she won't leave my wife and uh i don't throw nothing out she says i'm a hoarder she just said in the background but i'm not a hoarder so i don't know if you guys uh i send a thing to clay's channel uh to sign up for twitter so i know you got it frank pika you should have had it too because i i was able to text you that i was your oldest uh fan or follower i should say at 50 so i'm not sure how old grandpa barney is but you know i think i might be the oldest one on there but uh i, I took a picture of one of my horses uh someday i'll show you guys you know i'll do a little private thing you got to type stop typing on there frank how do you block your old lady from typing on there that's the next question um but no, Pika, I met my wife when I was 15. I should have ran. Unfortunately, she tricked me. And now I'm stuck, you know. And she didn't she didn't ruin me. She wrecked me. So, uh, but Frank, that's cool. You know, I'm, I'm happy for you. I hope things go, go planned. And all I can say is that no matter how things, how bad things get, just uh, find a way to work through it. That, that's, that's the best advice I can give because I, uh, uh, nowadays, there's so many people that if there's any type of a problem, people just run from the problem and, and ignore it. And unfortunately, that problem just never goes away. So, you know, it might not be fun to address, you know, whether it be financially or kids involved or or stepkids. So well, I'm not sorry. No. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry for now. I'm sorry, Pika, for now, because she didn't make dinner yet. So. So I'm sorry for now. But after dinner, I take that back. <laughs> So, and then I got to watch uh, the old Halloween movie from the fall. I got to watch that tonight on DVD. And let's go pick it up. Let's, it's pretty new. So, so that's all I got. You know, if you guys want to say anything or chat about anything, if you want to jump on Frank and talk, jump on or Pika, you could, you could jump on. There's a, in, the, in that, uh, Frank, I don't know if you've seen it, but on the top of the thing, I learned it from that Drew, the, the Drew, the grass cutter guy. You just click on that link and it'll, it'll throw you right into my chat. So, or into my stream. Excuse me. So I'm going to have my wife do the videos pretty soon, and I'll just be in the background. I'll do the typing. So uh, I don't know. Last night uh, I jumped on. Uh, Kalani was on. He did some YouTube testing. So I was on there about 9 o'clock for about an hour. He, uh, I didn't get a notification from uh, Facebook, or not from Facebook, but from YouTube. I got it through uh, Twitch. So I was able to jump on and check his stuff out. So. So I really, you know, that's all I got for tonight. You know, I'm just trying to, to generate new people to show up on the channel and <laughs> it's not really working. <laughs> oh, Frank's going to have fun. As soon as he gets that motorcycle out, he'll be ready to go. That's awesome. So anyways, I don't know if anybody's got anything going on. Oh boy. Hang on, Pika. Pika, you could jump on too. Just you got a camera. Let me see if we can get you on here. I got to make mine louder so I can hear you, Frank. Hang on. Okay, go ahead. Can, I, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Perfect. So what's you up to? Anything? Oh, nothing much. I started my uh, started spring cleaning today. Uh, got up early. I was probably up about quarter after five this morning. Uh, getting recycling together, laundry. Uh, just doing general cleanup stuff and uh, I had to go online and renew my tabs for my car because apparently they expired last month. That's good. Hopefully you're going to get no ticket for driving with no insurance because that's a big ticket around here. Well, no, I, I've got insurance. I, I didn't, uh, I had not renew, renewed my tags because yeah. I bought my car uh, towards the end of May, beginning of June when I got it. And for some reason, the tags are due in March on it. So, it, it, I don't know, that's just stupid to me. Well, we got around, around New York State, you got to renew them every two years. They do registration. And there's all the police departments around there got the plate readers. So, it's just about impossible to uh, get away with anything like driving with an expired registration or, excuse me, or a bad uh, inspection sticker because we got to get inspected once a year. So, that's definitely... Pretty hard to get around around here, unless you got out of state plates. You've got out of state plates for some reason they don't read them, you know. Yeah, we don't have the inspection sticker, but uh, your your tabs you got to renew every year. 
And uh, the, the good thing is, uh, you know, I, I'm in a small enough town. I go online. You know, I, I renewed them online. And I think pretty much as long as I've got the verification email, you know, they, yeah. can, they, can pull, they can pull me over for my tags being old. But it's like, hey, you know, I, I did go on. I, you know, I renewed them online. I'm just waiting for them to get mailed to me. So that they shouldn't yeah. they shouldn't bug me on that. Yeah, I got we got the same thing as they, you could print like a receipt off of your actual email to send you one back uh, from the okay. DMV. And they, uh, like I said, but it's in their system immediately if once you pay through uh, doing it online. So I got a question for you. When you go ahead, let me know what you're going to say, and I've got a question for you. Oh, I, I just noticed I got to put my hat back up on uh, back up on Caesar real quick. Okay. Pika, you still here? Did you go home? Oh. Everybody else is missing. Okay, Frank, so here's what I'm trying to do. Hold on a second. What did you say, hon? My wife says I have no friends. I type facts on there. Um, okay, so I tried adding a second camera onto my stream through my cell phone. I got it to work, but for some reason on my stream yard, I can't do like you guys do where you could get on the video and like move the chart around and like look at different stocks. Is there anything special yeah. you do? Uh, let me... I've not done it on my actual uh, on my PC yet with multiple cameras. I've only ever done uh, I've only ever done the one camera, which is uh, th this little guy right here. This is the actual camera that I use for the live stream. Okay. But I've I've never actually set up multiple cameras. But I know. So I know in uh, and I'll, I'll pop over there. My TV's being a pain, switching inputs. Uh, I know that I can go in. So I, I haven't looked at StreamYard yet. Let me... No, no, it's okay. You don't have to look at StreamYard. But I'm just trying to figure out because there, I, I there watch you... Way, there should be a way on StreamYard, if it's anything like StreamLabs, to where you set up multiple uh, multiple scenes. Mm -hmm. to where you, have, you have one set up where... Uh, like on mine, I have the the uh, the charts in the background, and I can build a second scene where I'm big, the charts little, or there's no chart at all, and it shouldn't be a matter of toggling what scene you're on. Well, because I watch you every day on your stream, and, and that's what I want to be able to do with mine. Like, say, if I'm talking to somebody and they want to talk about the price of Bitcoin, for instance, I want to be able to. You know, actually work the chart and have it go up and down, like like you guys got with the Weeble account. That I'm not sure if maybe the Weeble's doing it for you, but it's just it just won't let me do it on mine. Well, yeah, I think that was, I think that was my son's uh, my son's little brother calling. Yeah, so uh, you know, I just have it set up to where uh, for the chart when you're going and setting up your page. You should have it should have like a layout and you'll build your scene and in your scene that's where you uh you'd pick your sources so basically on the way i've got it set up i've got uh window capture and the window that i select is actually the the window for for weeble okay so what i do is you know I, i've got it all set up uh let me try and see if I can get this going for you here. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. I can move you over just a bit. Okay, you should be able to see there fairly yeah. decent. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. So, yeah, here's where I would build out all my scenes. And I, I would have, you know, I could have, you know, have one labeled for for the stocks and I can build a second one that is, uh, I could name it close up. But what I do is, so, you know, I've got the text here. I've got the text here. Yeah. And those are the different, uh, you know, text one, text two, uh, the image. That's actually my logo, uh, video capture. It's not coming up because I don't have my webcam turned on. The, the window capture is running. Uh, that, that is actually for Weeble. It's not up because I'm not logged into Weeble right now. 
and then the audio uh, input capture is, is running off my microphone or off my camera also. So, so my video and my uh, video and audio are both linked up to my camera, which for you, you know, if it's built the same way, you would go off your camera or your cell phone and you'd have those capture devices, you know, logged in and it would have a way you can go through, you know, add more, uh, add new sources, uh, toggle selective recording. So th there should be some kind of little setup in there that you can use to, to build your scene, you know, as you, uh, as you would like to. Okay. See, so my, yeah. my, my chart isn't in depth as yours, so I'm gonna have to do more research because, uh, yours is really, really in depth compared to mine. Mine's like very, very basic. So, yeah. But, but yeah. Maybe, because I upgraded to my stream stream yard and I had the basic package. So I went up to the $20 package. So maybe I'm going to have to go to the next package, the top of the line one to get all that, but I'm going to have to research that over the weekend and see. So. Yeah. But yeah, see if it's got uh, features like that. I mean, it's. Then yours is stream lab, right? You said stream lab. Yep. Stream lab, uh, same program that clay uses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to I'll check that out. Cause I might just jump on that. Do you pay to use yours? No, uh, Street Lab's actually free. Yeah, my basic one was free. So I upgraded to the $20 package now to be able to do more stuff on there. Like now, if you look in the top of my thing in the corner, I got a picture of me holding a beer can up there. And my, yep. That's my logo. So I yep. paid 20 bucks to get that. Yeah, for, for 20 bucks, you should get more than just being able to add one picture and as a logo. That's yeah, uh... And I could add a banner. Well, I know I had the banner to basic, and I could add now nine people. I could get up to nine people live on a chat. In the stream, and uh, so I can pull up to nine people in the chat, I should say. And then on top of that, I could uh, what else did they say I could do? I think I could do six or eight hours of a live stream actually before it cuts out. I don't know what that's all about. And if you go up to the next package, you could go up to 12 hours of a live stream before it all. You know. well, that, that's how long you can run continuously before you would have to end the live stream and start a new one, yes. Mm -hmm. It's just like uh, you know, public domain Wi-Fi. If you have a DCHP lease time on it, you've got so much time leased before you have to exit your stream and renew your stream again. Okay, because uh, I had a stupid idea I was going to do, but I didn't do it. I was going to make a little bird feeder cam because I feed the birds out here. We got a bunch of beautiful wild birds that come here, and I was going to do that just to put it on there, but I never figured it out. So. I'm not sure how I would go about doing that. But that's that's a whole other question that I'm not, you know, that's no big deal. But. Yeah, so I don't know if you remember, uh, Friday of last week, uh, I tried that uh, space call. Yeah, with, yeah, uh, yeah, with Grange, I remember with, with Grange. Grange. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking about, uh, actually, I might end up doing that as a regular weekly event. Like maybe, uh, you know, Friday after hours, uh, just kind of. Kind of a hangout evening. People can come in. At, <laughs> sorry, but pe people can come in on. Uh, you know, they can go check out the live stream, and then they can pop over uh, to uh, the space call, and they can participate. I think you know, I might give that a try down the road. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'm not sure how many people could go on space call. That's that's the only thing. Is there a limit? Can you have, you know, five people, ten people, twenty people? Uh, you can have ten people talking. But, uh, you know, as many people can be in there listening, but there can only be like 10 talkers on there. Okay. Okay. Cause and, I, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I say, I can just go through and, you know, as people are wanting to get on talk, like, Hey, you know, r rotate people through talking. If we get, you know, a, you know, a bunch of people on there. Okay. That'd be pretty cool. Cause that I did, uh, before I got a place channel, I used to go to a, uh, what's that black guy's name? Keenan. I can't think of what Keenan's last name is. Keenan Grace. Pretty smart young guy in his 30s. Uh, look him up, Keenan Grace, someday. And uh, he had a Discord. So I joined that Discord. It's like $3 a month, which is no big deal. Or if you prepay, you get a discount. And on his Discord channel, if you go on there, there's like, you know, you said six, five, six, seven, eight, ten people talking. And as they talk, their picture will light up and like it'll blink, like a circle around them. And then everybody else in the bottom, there's like anywhere from this guy's got a lot of subscribers. He's got like 40, 50,000 subscribers. So there's sometimes 100, 300, 400 people watching him on the bottom. So uh, so that's pretty much what the I, I believe the space call is kind of like then what they're doing. If you could pick people out, 
Pika, I'm not sure what your emoji means. Let your voice figure out. Yeah, the emoji, uh, oh, it's not an eggplant, so that's a good start. It's the monkey covering its eyes. Oh, you see Frank. Oh, oh, okay, I get you now. My wife says she sees Frank in the picture. <laughs> take that back, she told me. Yeah, I'm cutting out. I don't know. Maybe my wife's talking to her boyfriends on Facebook or something. I'm not sure. Because uh, Frank's picture looks perfect. My picture looks crappy. Oh, my God. You look like you're stoned. I'm buffering, too? Yeah. You see me, Frank? Am I buffering on your end? You're catching a, a, a little bit of a glitch there, a little bit of tiling on it. Huh. That's crazy. Because they came to my house a couple days ago, the cable guy from Spectrum, and he put some kind of a different filter on there, he said, because I was too high on some kind of Ohm's thing. I have no idea what he was talking about. Hmm. Maybe it's my cheap camera I got on my, because I'm just doing a, my, I got a web camera built right into the monitor of my computer. That's what I'm using right now with the uh, StreamYard. Oh, you've got a integrated, uh, what are you on, a laptop? No, my son gave me like a, it's a whole PC, but it's just like a computer screen. It's like five inches. And it's on top of it. It's got no power or nothing. It's all, it's a piece of crap, actually. It's got like a DVD built on the side of it. So you really can't add nothing to it. It's just pretty much, it's, a, I don't even know who makes it, an HP Hewlett Packard. It's probably about three years old. So, but that, that's what I use here. Yeah. Nothing fancy. I'm not big time like you yet. <laughs> it won't be long. So anyways, like I said, I was I don't know if you caught while I was talking. I'm gonna try to, to find that Drew because Drew did a live chat the other night, but it looks like at midnight some guys are on him. Because he talks to people on the left coast over there and I don't stay up that late. Uh, so I'm gonna ask him how he got to he's almost at eight hundred subscribers. Uh how long it took for him to get there because it's uh I don't want to say it's a long and painful process, but it's a long process for sure. Because I was talking to Kalani last night because he was on YouTube on his channel. No, he he did he 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 didn't do Twitch last night. He did YouTube because he's trying to get uh, his channel going on YouTube. And he was asking me about the subs. I said you need a thousand subs to get monetized. And he said that might be a lot, so he might just stick with the Twitch. Because I guess with Twitch, if you uh. He's, I don't understand Twitch exactly. He said, if you get 50 people following you and so many hours per month, you get some kind of a monetization. And the more more time you're on Twitch, the more you get. But I'm not sure exactly what he was talking about because he said, you know, the 1,000 people is going to be a lot. But but maybe in the video games, it might be nothing to get to 1,000 people following you. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. Hey, what do you think? Yeah, to paint on the video game, uh, certain games have different followings on them. Like there, there are a couple that I uh, that I watch. Uh, one of them is uh, he plays games like uh, Civilization, turn-based strategies. Uh, you know, you, well, you get people like Ninja, you get people like Shroud, uh, Potato McWhiskey, uh, Doctor Disrespect. There, there are a lot of really, really successful. Uh, Video game streamers, uh, Alex Gillen, uh, TM Maddock, uh, they, they do they do dra driving games like Gran Turismo and the Formula One games, oh. and you know, in fact, they actually do co op together online, and they'll each release their stream or you know do a video of their co op where where they started off as teammates, then they went to different teams, and they then they came back together on the same team again. Oh. Crazy, uh, Pika owns. Ohms, it's not a lot. Uh, Frank could explain it better. Ohms is some kind of a, a measurement. On a Ohms, is a measure, Ohms is a measurement of resistance. Anything uh, anything across a cable TV line, a coaxial line, will be 75 ohms of resistance. Uh, and usually the resistance on your in-home electrical panel is 25 ohms because it always travels upon the least resistance. Hmm. So cable TV has uh, th three times the resistance of, of uh, power 
that way if anything travels down the, the power lines it'll travel towards uh towards the electrical system to ground that's why you that's why everything is bonded to power because power always has the least amount of ohms on it yeah because i remember we were talking about that when cassie got hit by lightning she said with the power wire and that with their siding so pretty pretty interesting so you got anything going on for the weekend at all you going anywhere watching nascar racing that's all you're doing uh so yeah i i watched uh the the truck race it was a thursday night I watched the uh, uh, TiVo the the Xfinity race. Uh, really good fist fight on pit road after the race. It looks like the the Cup race is going to be rain delayed. Uh, I'm actually it's in the background right now. Uh, tonight at midnight my time, uh, the Formula One race from from Australia comes on, and tomorrow at uh, two p.m. my time. Uh, the Grand Prix or the yeah the, the IndyCar uh, Grand Prix Long Beach is on. So I, I TiVo all the races, but I also you know if I can watch them live, I'll watch them live. If not, I just TiVo them and watch them later on and skip the commercials. Yeah, because I was watching a little bit of the Saudi Arabia one the other week. It was on. It was actually pretty nice there. How nice the country is. I thought it'd be like just sand and like a uh, sheds outside, but it was actually beautiful down there. Oh. The course at Jeddah, Jeddah is absolutely gorgeous. I love that track. Yeah. That is, you know, that is such a high speed track. It, it, it's insane how gorgeous that track is. Uh, it, it's actually because uh, I play the the Formula One uh, twenty twenty one, and that that track's in the game, and I I really like that track. It's uh, got an interesting rhythm section to it. You know, where it's sweeping from side to side, yeah. and it keeps you on your toes. Sweet. Pika says Frank knows his stuff. Facts, Pika, facts. That's for sure. Just like, but uh, I used to watch NASCAR all the time back in the day, but ever since, you know, Jeff Gordon quit, you know, retired, Tony Stewart, the Earnhardt accident, the little Earnhardt Jr. It's just really not, in my opinion, it's not fun to watch anymore. Just like wrestling back in the day when I was young, a wrestling actually had a storyline. You know, you were talking smack about this person or this person's a, you know, a female manager or so-and-so and had a good storyline. And now it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. It's really, I don't want to say it's tough, but it's just, uh, you know, it's, you know, like with the wrestling, you know, there's no, no storyline, so I don't follow it. And with the NASCAR, I haven't followed it much because, uh, you know, every year I always tell myself I'm going to be home to watch the Kentucky Derby. And Kentucky Derby comes on during the season where I'm super busy at being a May and I always miss it, but – the last two years I caught it because I made sure I had time. And pretty much the only race and I really watch now is the Indy 500 because uh, I make sure I got time to watch that because before you know it, it's wintertime again <laughs> and it's all done. So, cool. uh, Dale Jr. Uh, ran the Xfinity race last night. Oh, I didn't I didn't even check it out. No, that's cool. Yeah, yeah he, he was in the NASCAR race last night. Uh, Jimmy Johnson is actually over racing Indy cars now. Yeah, I've seen on Indy cars. Yep, yep, yep. That's yep. Uh, not sure if he, not sure if he's going to be racing tomorrow. Uh, I, apparently, he it sounds like he had a crash in practice and he hurt his hand. So not sure if he's going to be racing tomorrow. Uh, I'm actually looking for. I've been enjoying the IndyCar season because uh, uh, Roman Grosjean from Formula One. He's he moved to the states and he's running the IndyCar series now. Yeah, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if you saw uh, two years ago he had the the crash at Bahrain. Where his yeah. car went went through the barrier, broke in half, nope. and exploded in flames. Nope. And somehow he came out of it with just burns on his hands. I mean, it, oh. it was incredible. You know, you know, the past ten years, I've seen you know three three or four drivers killed at the track oh. during races when I'm watching. That's and crazy. when his car when his car broke in half, and I saw the fireball, I, I thought he was killed. And when he climbed out of the vehicle, I, I was almost, I watch, uh, there's a Netflix series called uh, Drive to Live. Yeah. And th they did a program on that. And my, I, I still tear up just watching the way they, the way they put it together and everything. Cause I remember watching the race and thinking, thinking when his car broke in half and exploded that he was killed and just, you know, still see him climb out of the fire is, you know, <laughs> I, I, I still get emotional watching it. Yeah. I had a, 
I got a real good friend that fixes my vehicles for me when I can't fix them, my trucks and that. And they go yearly, religiously, they do the Pocono race for NASCAR. And they go, they do the Watkins Glen race for NASCAR. And they go to the Michigan one every year. It's just like, they invite me to go, but I never go because I don't got no free time. But it sounds like a lot of fun. They camp overnight. They make like a two or three day experience and, and they have a lot of fun. And uh, P- Pocono, Justin Wilson, that was one of the drivers that I saw killed. Did you? Wow. I, I was watching that race. Yeah, I, I watched that race when uh, when he was killed. So, yeah, that's, you know, like I said, I had seen it was uh, uh, Justin Wilson was killed at Pocono. Uh, Dan Wilden was killed at Las Vegas. And uh, Jules Bianchi, a Formula One driver, was killed over in uh, in Japan. Th- uh-huh. Those were the last three drivers that I saw killed at the track. And they, uh-huh. they, like I said, they, they were all within like six, six years, eight years. Hmm. Yeah, because I live myself, I live about two and a half to three hours from Watkins Glen. And uh, my son, he's a corrections officer. He lives in a place called Elmira, which is about three hours from me. So he's about an hour from Watkins Glen and also an hour from the Poconos. He's like in the, in the middle of it. But we uh, uh, we do horse racing, so we don't go check that out. But he's, you know, he's real close to all them events, and it would be pretty cool. So maybe someday I'll go down there in August and check it out for a day, the road course. Uh, Cause my brother, my brother, he was also, he lived down in that area and he would go and he would watch the Indy cars and come up and do the Watkins Glen circuit. And he said the speed on them was just incredible how fast they were. He said it was on a blink of an eye cause, cause he lived down there and he'd, Hey, Kalani Nate's here. It's Kalani, hey, Kalani the, before you ask tomorrow is the Moas and it's on Sunday. They're doing <laughs> extra hours. Are you going to, Kalani, if you want, go go to the top of the link and, and click on the link up there, and I'll let you on the stream. It's up towards the top in the chat. But uh, I just I just got no time in regards to breaking away because I got to take care of the horses all the time. So that just you got to feed them and take care of them every day. So you just can't you know put them in the shed and close the door and come back Monday morning and open them up. <laughs> yeah. So, but but it's a lot of fun because when we were younger. I had no money. This was probably around 95 or 96. And uh, no, Kalani, you can come on the stream. Jump on that thing. It's at the top. But uh, back in 95 or 96, there's a little uh, drag track by us. It's an eighth mile drag strip, and they do ovals on Saturday night. And it's a real small track. It's probably like not even a half a mile. So I had no money back in the mid 90s. And I used to go work on the safety crew. It was volunteer. And I worked on a speedy dry truck. And it was really nice because uh, I would go there. I would just sign a waiver that if I got killed or hurt, I wouldn't sue them. And then I would get a shirt and I'd work on the back of a speedy dry truck during the races. And they would they would let my family and my wife and my two kids, we had no money back then, really no extra money. And uh, they would give me a pass for a free dinner and it would work out great. So I'd give my wife the pass for dinner. We'd buy the kids a hot dog. We got free pop all the time because i just go get it with my work uniform on for them guys and and we had a real good time because uh, I love drag racing. Just chatting. That's cool. Um, but I love drag racing, but uh, drag racing, uh, people got a lot of bad attitudes as in, you know, that car is a piece of crap. That car is slow. You know, don't touch my car. What are you looking at? Get those kids away from it. And then we went on a Saturday night for the heck of it and to the oval races and the you know, they're just local, just amateur people. You know, you know, a couple of them had a couple of big dollar cars, but nothing crazy. Like, you know, modifieds, they're the, the highest class, but they were like, get in there, kids, go put the helmet on, jump in there. We don't care. And so we, we had a blast. So it was a, it was good. We did it for like three years and then everything else, the kids started getting older and we went our separate ways, but, but I love racing. It's a lot of fun. We had, we had a good time doing that. So is Kalani joining the chat? It says, Klein just put on here, he said, uh, uh, what what are we talking about? Just chatting. Well, we could talk about anything, Kalani. We were talking about video games for a minute. Uh, Frank give, knows a lot about them because we are talking about getting to uh, – Give me just a second here. I'll be right back. Yeah, 1,000 subs. And uh, we're just hanging out. I did a little video trying to get some people to hopefully join the chat and check it out, some new people. Because I do appreciate everybody stopping. Setting up iMac. 
Oh, you like McDonald's too? I like McDonald's. Big Mac's awesome. You're going to go live tonight? That's the next question. Oh, you're setting up iMac to join us? That's cool if you do. Uh, no, we just uh, so I just did a quick video talking about uh, trying to make ways to, to tell you how to make more money cutting grass, uh, freeing up some time, because if you got some free time, you could take on extra work and make more money. Uh, but unfortunately, Kalani, uh, I put these videos out. You know, I'm trying to get people to uh, not only subscribe, but I'm trying to learn them, you know, so they can make all their mistakes that I made so they don't make those mistakes and let them learn and just show them how to do it. Because really, there's a lot of money to be made. You know, if you believe in yourself, you can do whatever you want. It's uh, the United States of America. So, and then uh, Frank jumped on. Uh, Pika's been here. Shredder was here, but Shredder's watching. Uh, uh, Shredder's watching UFC, but it's cool. He stopped by. He said hi, so that's awesome. Uh, Big Max, don't say nothing to uh, Frank about Big Max, Pika. He don't like Rotten Ronnie's, he said. Right? <laughs> Rotten Ronnie's is my final choice of fast food. And the best thing they have, they used to be good when they had the chicken selects and the, the little popcorn chicken nuggets. They were good back then. I still like their regular nuggets, but uh, their burgers, way too salty. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's how you hide the bad flavor, put extra yeah. salt on them. But well, that's open how they last forever. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Because I, I hate to say it, back in the day, I consider McDonald's the breakfast of champions. And no lie, Monday through Friday, I would eat breakfast there. I would stop for lunch. And then if we went back out in the evening, I showed you on the, the paper doing some evening grass cutting, we would get that on the way home too. So um, I lived on McDonald's for years. So <laughs> if I don't get sick from McDonald's from eating all that bad meat, it'll be a, a miracle. So Pika, how could you hate McDonald's? Didn't you ever go to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal? You get a Happy Meal and you're happy. That was the best meal ever. But no, I still eat McDonald's all the time. It's just something I'm used to. Can't get away from it. But so awesome. you want to see how, you want to see how much of a race fan I actually am? Go ahead. Have, you, have you ever heard of a, a guy named Michael Schumacher? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow! How'd you end up getting that? This was a, it was actually a holiday present from my dad one year. That's cool. Yeah, it was funny because uh, my dad was a, a fan of the, the scooteria, of the, the Ferrari factory team, you know, the classic r red and white. Okay. And it was funny because uh, I, I always cheered for the German drivers. And especially, uh, you know, when I really got serious, serious, like watching every race, I was following, uh, you know, of course, I followed the, the German drivers. So Sebastian Vettel. And I st he was with Red Bull at the time. So, you know, I started cheering for the Red Bull team. And Vettel moved on. He's actually racing for Austin Martin right now. Uh, but I still uh, I still cheer for the Red Bull team with uh, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. So mm -hmm. I, I still cheer for them. But it's funny because, you know, this year uh, F Ferrari is in excellent form. Uh, uh, Charles Leclerc and um, uh, Carlos Sanz. Or signs, they they are phenomenal drivers. Ferrari's back on top, so I might have to might have to keep my uh my Ferrari helmet out for a while because they're doing good this year. <laughs> That's good. You should wear that helmet when you're watching the races. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice piece though to have. I like it. It's beautiful. I heard you were lying last night. Yeah, Pika. Pika, you missed it last night. I'm Kalani's biggest fan. For now. Oldest, too. My wife said the oldest fan, too. But don't worry, guys. You're going to get old, too. It won't be long. <laughs> Time waits for nobody. Lonnie said he's still trying to get on, Frank, to join us. He said, yeah. hang on. That's awesome. Yeah, so if I start streaming the the, the Formula One games, uh, you know, if I start doing video game live streams also, I've got the I've got my wheel set up and everything. So what I might end up doing is ha having the wheel, the pedals, and everything, and throw the you know if I'm racing a Ferrari in the game, throw the Ferrari, throw my Schumacher helmet on and drive the race. You know, have gloves on and that would be awesome. Yeah, 
unfortunately, so I've, I've got a nice twill jacket, but it's uh, the, the Budweiser jacket when Casey Kane was in NASCAR. But I got it, a Budweiser really jacket, too. Yeah. Hang on a second. I'll show you my jacket. I'll be right back in a second. <laughs> <laughs> You've created a monster, Frank. Yeah, I I have a habit for doing that. I have a feeling I'll be watching the Halloween Kills movie as a matinee tomorrow. I got it in a plastic bag so it don't get dirty. Okay, it's uh, D Dale Jr. Yeah, number eight, yeah. Yep. I got it in a plastic bag so that it doesn't get dirty. Yours is nicer than mine. Yours is a lot nicer. You got the collar. CaseyKane.com. Casey, I don't got Casey Kane on mine. Mine's number eight on the back. That's a nicer jacket than the one I got, though. Yeah. Because it's got like the the top looks like it closes up on your neck. Uh, it doesn't actually close up on the neck. It's just got the the button snap, but it's got the popped collars on it. Yeah. I don't think mine's got Dodge on it either. Pretty sure mine's like I said, Dale Earnhardt. Uh, yours would have been uh, Richard Childress Racing, so your, yours would have been a Chevy. You've got Chevy on yours, correct? I gotta see. I'm gonna take it out of the plastic bag. Oh boy, it's got dust on it. You got the light on? I got NASCAR Winston Cup Series, Dakar Nori, Snap On, Dale Earnhardt Jr. It should have RCR on it somewhere. Richard Childress Racing. I see the I see the bow tie for the Chevy emblem. Yeah, it says Remington Arms. The Outlaw is a Chevy champion. You said RCR before. That says that on the sleeve. Yep. I don't see no Chevy sign though. It is in the front. Where? No, it's on the front, the right side. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, the white point out. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I just wore this jacket like when I go to the hockey game or something. <laughs> pretty cool. Wow, my dad is That's awesome. Klein, are you still there? Because yeah, she was alive on the thing. I, I, got, I got to do one more thing. Yeah. Huh? You're good. Who is? Okay, cool. Kalani, we got. Well, don't tell my wife. We got all night until uh, she falls asleep. Because she's going to get mad at me again for being on YouTube too much. No, we don't like the Vikings. No. Mm -mm. Oh, Vikings. I got to get a better camera because Frank's camera is a lot nicer than the one I got. No, I uh, we like the Bills peaking for something to watch, but uh, what'd you say? Oh, you put gold bills? Oh, I thought Pika put gold bills. See, Pika, I gotta watch what I say because my wife always is checking on me in the background. Oh, she's trying to give me a viewer, so I can't be mad. I might have to call my mom maybe to help us out too. Hey, Pika, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I'll tell you something real quick. Uh, probably about two years ago around Valentine's Day, I got the C word, I think. 
So uh, I never got tested for uh, the C word the whole time because they didn't have tests back then. So I got to go for a outpatient procedure on a Tuesday. I don't want to say what it is because it's embarrassing, but uh, I had to go for my first uh, C test this past Friday, and they do them as a drive through That lady stuck that Q-tip so far up my nose when I had my head tilted back. My eyes must have watered for over a minute straight. I never had it done before, so it was actually, you know, it wasn't bad now that it's done, but it was pretty, pretty painful, actually, for me being such a big baby. And then my one friend, uh, yeah, I remember, I know, that's why I was telling you about that, that test, the swab test in my nose. And then my one friend, uh, Ariel, i got to adjust my shirt. My one friend, Ariel, he, uh, uh, my Puerto Rican friend, he's probably had probably 20 of those tests because he does all kinds of outpatient stuff. So he's the king of that. But uh, like I said, I might have had it back in uh, two years ago around uh, Valentine's Day because I got sick that uh, that New Year's Eve. Uh, with the actual flu and the the, the uh, flu, you know, barfing flu. And then, you know, two months later, I was sicker than a dog. I never was that sick in my life. So, but that's before all that started. I just wanted to say it, so I don't want to talk about it, but it was just uh, something pretty funny. I think Frank's letting a dog out, maybe, or he ran away one or the other. So that's pretty cool. Oh, oh, I don't have a brain, but I guess it kind of feels like that. <laughs> yep, yep, definitely. But anyways, I don't know, Pika, if you bought in on that uh, that GameStop GME. I didn't want to say nothing to the uh, the GameStop. To uh, hey, hey, Kalani, I got to see you. I'm not sure. Your picture's even worse than my picture. Let me see if I could do this here. Oh, um, God. It's super echoey. I'm echoey? No, I am. You look okay, though. You sound okay. I'm going to uh, try to figure out how to make this bigger. No, hang on. I got to close YouTube. Okay, because I was going to say, uh, Pika Power, about uh, GME. There we go. You were saying that Danell said it was... Uh, your picture last night, Kalani, was 100% better on YouTube for some yeah. reason. Oh, boy. Now we got the park ranger. Uh, but anyways, uh, Pika, that GME, it might squeeze, but the price that it's at right now, it's way too high. Frank, I don't know what you think about GME, but Pika was thinking about getting in the other day, and it was like 160 bucks. I think it's too high to get in right now for for entry point. What do you think on that? Uh, Yo. Know you got to remember, my opinion is skewed because I'm an options player and I play covered calls, which means I'm going to go for the stock that allows me to get 100 shares the easiest. Yeah. When you do cost analysis, you know, right now for $2,000, you can grab 100 shares of AMC and it opens the possibility, you know, you don't have to do it, but it at least gives you the possibility of running covered calls on it. I like that one, Klein. That's a nice house you got there. The mansion. <laughs> no, it's not my house. <laughs> Klein's got a mansion up there. Now the mansion was better than the washing machine room. But uh, but no, I, I was just saying, Frank, that uh, the, I, like I said, the, the price is just way too high. Because uh, you know, if you would have told me like you did back when it was ninety bucks, we were talking back in end of January, beginning of February. So it was a great great buy back then. But I just think it's just too high right now. You know, and uh, and the uh, I hate to say it, you know, I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but the MOAS might take forever, and it might, the MOAS might might actually beat the people that are waiting for the MOAS where they just give up, you know, because uh, everybody's hoping to get rich quick nowadays. So, you know, I, I don't want to be you know, negative about it, but it's all about, you know, how much time that you have. Yeah, when you think about it, you know, if you wanted 100 shares of GameStop, you need sixteen thousand dollars. I mean, yeah. who has? You know, I don't have sixteen thousand laying around to to, to move. I, you know, I could uh, unload a whole bunch of stuff. I could you know dump a bunch of AMC. But you know, why jump out of a play that I'm already in, especially a play that I'm already generating revenue on? 
Okay, that's cool. Hey, what's the story behind your shirt? Before I forget, now I'll be laying in bed going, man, I should ask Frank what his shirt story is about. Your Ranger shirt, what's that? So, yeah, I was, uh, back in the day, I was uh, t- trying to uh, trying to get a Mark Mazier jersey. Okay, yeah, remember him? Number 11, yeah, for the yep, Rangers. Yep, so I, I was trying to get a Mazier because uh, you know, Mark Mazier is my favorite hockey player of all time, flat out, hands down. He, he There's a reason why there's a leadership award named in his honor. I mean, he, he, in my opinion, you know, Gretzky has, you know, the, the most goals. Mm-hmm. The, the most point, you know, he's got so many records and everything, but Gretzky was a scorer. He had the captain C, but really Gretzky wasn't an on ice, uh, on the ice leader like Messier was. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I coached youth hockey through many, many years since uh, we probably started playing in 93 when our kids were three years old. Uh, they learned how to ice skate before they could ride a bike. So uh, we had a lot of fun. And, and my favorite guy, my son actually, uh, when he played travel hockey, not that I'm bragging or nothing, he had number 99 on his jersey because we really like Wayne Gretzky. But Wayne Gretzky, who was just like, he was such a finesse player and he was so good that he just pretty much stood off to the side waiting to get the puck and scored. So, yeah. but, but he was, like I said, in, in my opinion, he, he was the greatest, and you know, but – um. I don't know where I'm going with that story, but I just want to ask you about that shirt. So, uh, yeah. you know, but, I, so when I, uh, there, there was a sports store, uh, a sports store down in uh, Mississippi when, when I was trying to get my Messier Jersey, they didn't have it. Uh, you know, they were, they were supposed to have an order coming in and, you know, I, I knew Mike Richter, uh, that, that's who I'm wearing is Mike Richter. Cause I like goaltenders, you know, yeah, goaltenders, yep, yep, yep. you know, goaltenders, you know, just like in uh, just like in football, you know, defense wins championships. A yeah. good goalie, you know, all it takes is one goal to get by for your team, and if your goalie shuts the other team down, you win. You know, that's there. There are so many games that are decided one zero. So you know, your goaltenders really do win games. So I I tend to like goaltenders, uh, but but yeah, so. You know, they had a lot of other jerseys and, you know, some of the names I didn't recognize, you know, I, there's so many, you know, so many great players out there. I, yeah. I, I, I could probably name one player on every team that I like, but uh, I, I saw the Richter Jersey. I'm like, Oh yeah. Goaltender. I'm get that. That's the Jersey I'll get. Yeah. I've got a Buffalo Sabres Jersey around here, but it doesn't have a name on it. Yeah. I got one. My wife's got one Miller, but Hey, let's talk to client for a second. Then we'll talk back, talk back to hockey. Hey, what's up with that cat behind you? Oh, that's. <clears throat> can you that's hear me? All right. Cat. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you perfectly. Cool. Yeah, that's flea. He's got fleas. No, that that's her. <laughs> that's that's her name. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's her name. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We, before you jumped on the chat, we were talking, man, Frank, about uh, video games and possibly getting all those uh, subs that you need mm-hmm. to uh, get monetized on YouTube. Uh, he named a bunch of games I know nothing about, so. When he comes back in a second, we'll see what he's got going on. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah, I heard him talking about the uh, the uh, Formula One racing. With yeah, the, yeah, uh, he's got. Frank's going to show you the nice. Oh my God! Now you're playing hockey again. Yeah, hey, Frank, I know show nothing that. about hockey. <laughs> hey, I got to go take a pee real fast. Frank, show him your uh, Gretzky. Yeah, show uh, show uh, solid. Show Kalani your uh, your helmet. He wants to see your helmet. I got to take a, a bathroom break for a second. I'll be right back. There it is. Show him. Talk for a second. Oh, yeah. Back. I saw that, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, is that like a uh, like a replicated helmet or? No, that's actual. Uh, I don't know if it's the same. Uh, same quality, but it, it is it does have actual impact padding inside, not not just the regular uh, regular soft foam, but it's yeah. got the hard the hard impact foam in it too. Yeah, during uh, COVID and everything, when that was a big deal, uh, Charles Leclerc and I want to say there were some other F one drivers that had a twitch, or they still have a twitch actually, and they were doing the same thing. They were streaming and racing each other. I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't get to watch any of it live, but I thought that was real cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's funny, uh, but Paul was talking about Gretzky. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. When Kalani talks, I'll go through my, my all-star, Campbell Cup all-star jersey. Yeah, I know zero about hockey. <laughs> oh. yeah. I, I, I probably got a dozen, uh, at least a dozen jerseys that are named player jerseys, and I've got a bunch that are known, uh, you know, j- just a team logo with no names on them, but. Heck yeah, that's awesome, man. You should you should definitely do the uh, the streaming of the F1. That'd be awesome. I really like yeah. racing games, for sure. Yeah, uh, right now I watch uh, Alex Gillen and TM Maddock. Uh, they're, they're, uh, I think Alex Gillen might do, I think he might do eSports. Uh I know Tia Maddock, he does, uh, Benjamin Daly, he does a lot of the, uh, the, the online racing. He, he make that's, he makes his living. He, he makes a pretty good living doing the, the online racing. Yeah. A lot. There's, I mean, being a streamer specifically on Twitch, like people just playing video games, man, they make pretty good money. Yeah. Like I can definitely think of a handful of people who aren't very famous that, like that's all they do. They just play video games for six, eight hours a day. And I remember getting into an argument with my dad when I was in like middle school, high school. And all I would ever do is play video games. That was it. No chores, no nothing. He hated it, of course. But you know, I got we got into an argument, and uh, I told him in, in anger that I was, you know, someday like I'm gonna get paid to play video games. But I'm yeah, not, I'm not quite there yet. But you know, I'm getting there. <laughs> Well, my, my son wants to do that also, and uh, I, I for Christmas I got him a new computer. You know that he actually could. He's just got to you know. He, he likes to play the games. It's like, but you know, he, he wants to stream the games. It's like, all right, we. Oh, who do we got there? What do we got? When you start your uh, racing channel, this is actually. Is that a race suit? It's a one-piece Nomex fire suit that I got. It might not fit you, Frank. It's a large. But if you do do that stream, I'll send it to you for free. You could have it. I just was looking looking for my Gretzky jersey. I couldn't find my Wayne Gretzky jersey. But I know we were talking about doing the with the helmet and the gloves. Yeah. This is a one-piece fire Nomex suit. It's expired though. It expired back in uh, 1998. Well, hopefully, hopefully playing the video game, I'm not getting set on fire. So <laughs> that, that was a sick burn right there. <laughs> and, then, and then when we go to uh, the Sabres games, my wife wears this one. When we go to the Sabres game, uh, yeah. Ryan Miller. Yep. Ryan Miller was a goaltender, and he went to uh, the Kings now, but he's retired now. But he was real good back in the day. So that's hers. And then I just wear just a generic, uh, just a generic. Uh, oh, the old school. Yeah, I love that one. It's Reebok, but it's got no letters on it. And uh, but uh, so uh, I wear this one, and I like this one because it's so oversized. I can wear a sweatshirt underneath, and I don't have to wear a jacket. Yeah, uh, my Buffalo Sabres jersey that I have is the uh, the, the red, black, white, and gray. Yeah. Yeah. That's Dominic yep. Hasek had them back in the day. Yep, that that was a, the the Hasek and the Mirzlav Shatan, the, the the colors that they wore. Yep. So Kalani, you got a green screen behind you then? No, that's that's my kitchen. <laughs> I'm saying you got a green screen though, right? Did you put that program on? No, that's something in the stream yards. I was just kind of messing around with it because I I figured you guys wouldn't want to see like my trash can and my washer and my dirty laundry but <laughs> no that, if that's your kitchen that's a nice picture actually that's that's nice actually yeah it looks like downtown like yeah. you're the joneses oh no absolutely not we are not the joneses <laughs> yeah, I don't, you found that in stream yards that back setting no uh yeah what's currently there is just my actual or our actual house but I think it's in settings. If you click settings, and then there's virtual background. Okay, that, I'm gonna look that up later. I'll look that up. Okay. Yeah. So there's like blur where it'll blur the background. There's a brick background. The fancy mansion. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, my one friend's got that on his. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, Pika. Hey, Pika's taking off, guys. I got to say bye to Pika. Uh, thank you for stopping and being first in the chat. Since 7 o'clock this morning, she was here, guys. 7 a.m. Yep. Holy cow. Just like that. Well, I, I was already doing housework at 7. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pika, have a nice weekend. We'll see you soon. If you should go live again, we'll all be there to support you. Yeah, have a good weekend, Pika. Later, Pika. Awesome. But now that's cool. I have to check out the settings with the mansion thing. That's yeah. cool. But hopefully, uh, did you guys talk about the video games for a second? About those those ones that all the the followers you know about, Frank? Did you guys talk about that? I missed yeah. it. I, I mentioned some of the ones that I know. Uh, you know, some of them do. Uh, some of them are on YouTube. Uh, they also do Twitch gaming. Some of them actually stream to uh, the the Facebook gaming uh, gaming stream thing they have. Nice. That's cool. <clears throat> That's something I want to get more uh, hardware-wise. It's like getting the uh, Elgato capture card and stuff so I can use my computer to stream instead of my console so I can stream to multiple platforms at once. Because with my console, I'm limited to either YouTube or Twitch. Oh, one or the other? Yeah. So that's yeah. what I was doing last night was setting up YouTube, Yeah. you know, just so I can switch, you know, maybe do a stream on Twitch one week and then go to YouTube for another kind of thing. Is that a Play 5? Like a PlayStation 5 you're using or a PlayStation 4? Yeah, I got a, I got a PlayStation 5 back in November, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty difficult to get. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. No, the thing is, if you're yeah. on, if both of your, uh, if your computer and your console are on the same, uh, the same Wi-Fi, you should be able to do a direct stream uh, virtual card. A virtual capture card. Yeah, you should be able to. Uh, PlayStation Five, PlayStation Four, is virtual card uh, enabled also. To where it, you just have to go into your computer, set up the programming. Uh, you know, I haven't actually done it, but I've, I've seen videos on it. You, you can set up, uh, as long as they're on the same Wi-Fi network, you can uh, do a virtual capture card to your PC from your console. Sorry, I'm going to look this up right yeah, meow. Yeah. Right yeah. meow. <laughs> right meow. Right <laughs> meow. Uh. Hey, uh, Frank, I don't know, you weren't in the chat maybe that day. Did you uh, go on the, the Twitter and see uh, Trapper's got a picture of his puppies? You see how nice they were, the puppies on? Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw his puppies, yeah. Two pictures of the puppies. Hmm. I shouldn't have shown my wife because now she wants one of them. So. Yeah, I'm going to definitely look into that because that's been a big downfall about streaming is, th is that it's either Twitch or it's YouTube. And I started on Twitch and then moved on to YouTube a few years ago, and then I'm back to Twitch. Yeah. So See, it's easy because I believe on the consoles, you can set up Twitch as one of the apps on your console itself. Mm -hmm. so, so it's seamless streaming. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah, because I was looking it up because I, I realized, man, I need a capture card. I'll need a second monitor for streaming. Uh, because, you know, if I'm playing on my, my main TV on my 55, I, you know, I want to be playing the game. I don't want to, you know, have my chat taking a part of the game. So I would actually get, you know, pick, pick up, I don't know, like a 21, 25 inch TV tab off to the side to have my chat and everything and have, uh, you know, that's where I'd have stream labs and everything set up, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I, I was trying to find mm -hmm. ways and I, I came across something about using the, the virtual capture capture card for PC. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be nice. Does it cost money or? I don't believe so. I, th I think it's yeah. just uh, just a matter of programming. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I'll definitely have to look into that because the there capture cards be, are expensive. Yeah, you might have to go and, uh, you know, it might be a thing where you have to have, uh, have like their browser or, you know, th their add-on mm -hmm. set up on your computer. The extension? Yep, yep. Okay, yeah. It was, it was funny, uh, like, um, I saw that your stream was going on and everything, and uh, so I hopped on, but I was already setting up my Mac, and I was just about to, like, stream on YouTube and make some music, 
because I haven't made music in quite a while. I was just going to mess around with the FL Studio. And so, but here I am. So. <laughs> Is that music free music, or you gotta pay for it? No, it's it's a um, it's a producer's. Um, you help me out here, Frank. Uh, FL Studio. It's kind of like Ableton. Basically, uh, it's a digital dog. audio workshop. Yeah, and, your, your dog. Yeah, my dog. So you know, I can take all these different instruments, sounds, and put them all together and make music. And they're not copyrighted yeah. at all. No, no, I paid, I paid for the producer edition. Like I paid, I forget how many hundreds of dollars for it, but it's mine. Like I own the license to that software. Oh, that's cool. So. Cause I got hollered at twice by YouTube for having music in the background. And Oh no. Yeah. So if you make your own music, then, mm -hmm. you know, that's your music. You, like you can mm -hmm. use that wherever you want. Yeah, the, the only thing, uh, Paul, you would be running into if anyone had a royalty claim or if it was, uh, uh, you know, copyrighted music to where the the, uh, the the owner of the music had a takedown notice on it. If, if it's stuff that you create, like if I pull, you know, if I pull a guitar off the wall and start jamming, as long as I'm not, not playing co copyrighted music, YouTube won't do anything to me because mm -hmm. it's my music. Mm hmm. Yeah, you can even play your own rendition of Crazy Train if you wanted on the guitar. That is. Yep. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I got I got so much stuff going on that I don't got time to mess around with stuff like that. Maybe someday I will. But I'm interested in the video game things. If you could pay to play video games. I'd rather play video games in the wintertime than go snow plowing. I'm sitting home, so oh, man. I'll look for that. If you get to that, if you get to the next level, Kalani, I'm going to try following behind you. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, what's, what's I, the deal with uh, monetization on Twitch? It's easy. Um, it just takes time. Um, you know, the requirements for monetization on Twitch are far easier to achieve than YouTube. A thousand subscribers. That's to me. That's just that's insanity like i don't think that'll be achievable for me unless i keep continuing to build my content and um i only i've only have one video that yesterday as of yesterday hit 770 ish views and it was a car video that i made and you know i still only have i don't know 11 subscribers and I've been on YouTube for quite a while, but I don't have that very many videos, of course. So the fact um, that you have that many views, that's insane. Really? That's a lot? <laughs> that that is a lot. Uh look, give me say I'm pulling up my YouTube studio right now. Yeah. Um uh, it's a few years old. Um let's see. It was installing an oil catch can for my car and like how to do it and stuff like that. Um but yeah, so that that that's like the most traffic I've ever seen for my page on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but I got, anyways, for I got, Twitch, it's um. So there's there's two different things. There's an affiliate, which is what I am, and then there's um, a partner. And I want to say it's just the payment tiers <clears throat> for your your ad revenue. Um, if you're an affiliate, you get so many cents per ad. And then if you're a partner, now don't quote me on this, um, but you get more money for your advertisements. Um, you're saying you're saying that for people watching watching the ad, you're saying you get paid, right, then? Yeah, but there it's like, I want to say it's like three cents. Yeah, with YouTube, I want to say it's, it's like three quarters of a penny. Holy cow. Yeah, three quarters of a penny. Wow. So even one cent. Go yeah. ahead, Frank. So my uh, my best video for is one hundred nine. Is one hundred nine? I seen it. It's your very first one, right? Oh, I thought sixty nine. Oh, top videos in this period. Okay, well, in the last one, it's one hundred nine. I'm pretty sure because I this is the very first time you came on. You did PDP. 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 Yeah, I did. I did the PDP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't here back then, but I watched it a couple times, laughing. <laughs> I didn't come on till uh, mid December. I started just watching in the background, and I didn't come back and join until sometime in January. I want to say. Yeah, let me now get I'm it. a pro. 
<clears throat> Here, I'm actually going to look it up real quick. But for to be – so on Twitch, it's more than just gaming too. Like there's a lot of people that make music on Twitch. They'll just be chilling and doing a thing on the computer or just playing the guitar. They'll be singing. They'll have um, web groups kind of like what we got going on here. And there'll be a bunch of people hanging out and there's just chatting, which is, you know, like what we're doing here. Um, so it's more than just gaming. Primarily yeah. it's gaming, but it's more than just gaming. Yeah, you're right. 109 views. I didn't realize that. It is, that's the biggest one. And I got, believe it or not, I think I got, I got 3,200 views on a 79 Malibu card that I got that I'm working on. And I think I got almost 5,000 views on a, I don't got my computer on because I don't want to mess with my screen. I think I got 5,000 views on spraying fluid film. Fluid film is like a, a rust inhibitor. Oh, yeah. Vehicles. I like I fluid got, film. It's really good for uh, hedge trimmers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I use it, uh, fluid film and wool wax. I made two videos on it and I got like almost 8,000 views between the two of them. But I'm saying... I'm not big time at all. I'm just I'm just making videos on uh, wood burning outside fireplaces get a lot of views, and I, I tried doing a series on like uh, swapping over an LS motor, Ooh. you know, a 5.3 into my uh, Malibu. I didn't get many views on it because I watch a lot of people that do do the you know motor swaps like that to go to you know a modern day driver. Mm -hmm. I don't get many views, but like on. Uh, like my certain grass cutters, I get tons of views on. And then the central boy, I got crazy views. Fluid film, I got a lot of views. And other than that, like with us talking right now, it's <clears throat> it, it's tough to get views unless, you know, for some reason. You know, uh, Paul, I have a request slash recommendation. Request for me personally is uh, sharpening mower blades. Mm -hmm. Never done it personally. I'm sure there's a lot of videos out there on it. Mm -hmm. but I would definitely watch yours first just for yeah. support. <laughs> okay. But here's my thought. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Uh, for what a lawnmower blade costs. You might as well just buy one. Yeah. They're 15 to $20. Yeah. Um, so I just take them. I throw them out. You could sharpen them. Uh, mm -hmm. Cause I don't want to say this. Hopefully nobody's watching on the grass cutting side for many years. I, I cut grass in my, a, a butter knife, you know, a butter knife used for butter and put bread and butter. Butter knife was actually sharpened on my lawnmower blades for many years. And that's because of just poor maintenance on my side. Uh, but uh, you could take the brace to the lawnmower shop and they'll sharpen for like $7. But I only change mine and I cut about 60 lawns a week. I change mine maybe four times a year. And, and, it is, and as long as you like ain't running over, you know, sticks or, you know, hitting little bricks or rocks, mm -hmm. they're going to last for a while. And if you have just a regular llama you're cutting at your house, it should last forever. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, I do know how to sharpen them. And uh, if you look through my videos uh, halfway through on my page, which I don't want you to look at my page and check it out, which is you don't have to. But there's I made uh, uh, well, I got one lawnmower that I currently use. They don't make blades for it when I had it. So I took blades mm. off an old, older mower that I bought like 20 of them because they were on clearance for like two bucks a piece. And uh, I just drilled the center hole open just a little bit bigger. It's a five ace with a little uh, drill bit that uh, like a step drill bit. And then and I use them now and they work perfectly. They're, they're the exact same thing. Go ahead, Frank. We're listening. So, yeah, I looked through. And so currently, so, you know, you need 4,000 hours of watched content to get monetized on YouTube. Yeah. 4,000 hours. But that, yep. Lonnie, that's it, nothing. That's nothing, Clonnie. Here, here's oh, wow. the thing. This is what you got to understand. So I am cur I started this uh, the this channel the Monday before Thanksgiving. I am yeah. already at five hundred and five point seven hours, and my thumbnail the thumbnails for my live streams and videos <clears throat> have already been kicked out to thirty one point six thousand people. Dang. Okay, so Frank, if you can, can and, you look at mine real quick? How many hours do I got? Uh, you, you no, you would have to go into uh see. You can go into your channel, or you can go into uh, – it'll say my YouTube studio. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly what it is. I just want to go there right now. Let me, let, me, let me grab my cell phone. Hang on a second, okay? I'll grab yeah, my so, phone. The, uh, so the requirements to be a Twitch affiliate, um, it's 500 minutes broadcast in the last 30 days, 
seven broadcasts in 30 days and average three viewers for 30 days and then at least 50 followers. That's it. And then you're affiliate and you can be monetized and get tips and paid subscriptions and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I on YouTube, I found a way around uh, around the monetization as far as getting tips. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Twitter account, I actually have tipping turned on yeah. through cash. Yeah, I learned that today. Actually, <laughs> I started going yeah. through all my social medias and updating my bios and stuff. And then you guys and Pico somehow found me, and <laughs> my meow got put on blast. So <laughs> yeah. you should have ran. You should have ran while you had a chance. Now you're stuck. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, hey, I'm, already to, I'm already up to twenty six hundred views on my channel so far. <laughs> Okay, and Frank, I'm on my page. How'd you get to it now? I'm on my it says Paul Ray Lawns. I'm on it says manage my account. So what do you want me to go? My your channel. No, uh oh and let me get back. Let me get to home real quick. It's I'm like not sure if it's set up the same way on, on the app, but on the PC you're gonna be looking for uh YouTube studio is what you're looking for. Okay, I'm on it. Yep, yep, I'm in it. And that's where you go to look at all your analyticals. Okay. It says I got 134 subscribers the last 28 days. I got 3,596 views. Last time, 115 hours on plus seven for the month, it says. That's what I want to look at. Okay. Uh, there should be a tab. Now, I don't know if it's the same on, because like I said, I do most of my stuff on my computer. So there's an actual screen that says monetization. It, it says dashboard content, playlist, comments, subtitles, copyright, monetization, customization, audio library. Did you say you're going to pop off her screen? Miss um, um, Sandra might be able to see. If she's on uh, typing on, if she has the computer, she might be able to see it on there. I got I got mine. She went to bed. This is what I got. I don't know if you can see it. You can't oh. see it. Though. No, the screen's too bright. <clears throat> let, me go back no, to let, me, let me do it this way. This way works all the time. <clears throat> That's what you'd be looking for. Oh, let me set this down here. Make sure I can see. Okay, that's on your channel that I'm looking at? Your channel? Yep. No, that ain't my channel. Okay. Well, right down here, it has monetization. And if you click on monetization, it'll take the screen, and then you come over. Like I said, I don't know how it shows up on mobile. On okay, mobile. Says, okay, it says your, you your data on YouTube I'm looking at. No, that ain't what I want then. So you can see there, there's a 78 subscribers. Now it's saying 497, but uh, it hasn't updated in their servers yet. Okay, so it says YouTube watch history. Should I click on that? No, you'll have to be, if you click on, if you're on your phone. Yeah, I'm on my phone, yeah. Yeah, so I got gotcha. you. You have to download the YouTube Studio app in order. It's a separate app. So go to your channel. Yep, I'm on my channel. I clicked on YouTube okay. Studio. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you can see that on my phone, but um, it's right here. Okay. It's a little analytic button. All right. And then you'll be in your analytics. Okay. Yep. It says uh, views. Okay. It says 3.5K. It says 396 more than usual. Okay, but that's for the month, but you have to scroll all the way to the bottom and it'll say view more in YouTube Studio. I believe. Because I know that's okay. how you view that kind of stuff. Next subject, next subject, let my wife look it up. <laughs> next subject. I don't want to keep you guys up all night. She's in bed. Um, next subject, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, I think so what, four thousand hours is nothing. Four thousand hours yeah. of views—that shouldn't be too hard to get. Uh, so here are the requirements, because I told Frank, but you were gone. Requirements for to be monetized and uh, affiliate on Twitch: 
it's 500 minutes broadcast in 30 days, seven different days in 30 days, uh, hold an average of three viewers for 30 days and have 50 followers. That's it. Well, you should have 50 followers, right? <clears throat> on Twitch? Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. already monetized and everything on Twitch. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then what, what's your next step on Twitch then to get to the next level? Is there a next level <clears throat> or, yeah. or are you maxed out? No, partnership. And for partnership, I have to have an average over the course of 30 days, 75 viewers. And that's a lot because I only have like 76 followers. Well, so, if you send me if you send me a hundred bucks a week, I'll watch you all the time. <laughs> what do you need, Frank? What's your account? Fifty bucks? What are you at? <laughs> yeah, that's why I was super stoked the other day when everyone was in my stream because I was the most engaged my chat's been and like the most engaged and most viewers that I've had concurrently, like in one stream. So that was really cool. It was real well, grateful. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Kalani, you're going to make it because you're down to earth and, and you're a nice guy. And you talk to people. You ain't blowing nobody off. So so you're going to make it. No, um, appreciate it. <laughs> I, if, if I see you on there, I'm, I'm going to share it to, twi uh, to Twitter. I'll tweet it out. Yeah. Well, uh, today I just started updating. Again, I just started updating all my social media. So, like, updating my bios on my Twitter. Like, I've never been involved with Twitter and barely, barely involved with social media. Like to me, social media has always just been, you know, I'll flick around, but for the most part, I stay on YouTube. Like that's, that's where I, you know, engage per se. So well, uh, if it was me, Kalani, this is not financial advice either. I would <laughs> stick with the, the Twitch more because uh, yeah. you're going in the right direction that way. And like right now with YouTube, you might be starting at the bottom as mm -hmm. we're, you know, I've been stuck at 133, 134, 135. It changes every couple of days because I don't know if people are playing games or, or what the story is by unsubscribing. I try not to say nothing that offends nobody. Yeah. You know, I could say some nasty things very easily, but I keep my mouth shut. And so I don't want to get nobody mad at me. I understand it. But uh, <clears throat> I, I think the YouTube part of getting to, to 1,000, it's super hard, but I believe just like anything else, once you get to a thousand, a thousand is going to turn to two thousand, and then to four thousand, and it's going to be like a snowball effect. So I, I don't know. What do you think about that, Frank? You, you agree or disagree? I think it'd definitely be worth. Uh, I think it's like one hundred and sixty bucks to to buy. Uh, you, you can actually buy it YouTube subscribers. Uh, you, you can buy. Uh, people go out there and they'll build bots. They get slowly delivered over like a week long period. Mm -hmm. And I think about it every uh, may maybe <clears throat> once a month or every payday, go in and uh, you know buy a batch of a hundred. <laughs> because okay. what happens? Is, what happens is th these bots will actually engage with your channel, huh. and mm -hmm. the engagement is what gets your channel out to more people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but so, you don't yeah. think you don't think YouTube's going to look at that and say it's it's a fake a fake person? Maybe I don't know. I'm just I mean on Twitch. I, I, that's how it is on Twitch. They'll, what, they'll they they monitor for bots. Yep they they're very very adamant on you know bot accounts and uh, paid paid followers and stuff like that. Like they're pretty Johnny on the spot with that kind of stuff, and they'll demonetize your account, delete your account, deactivate it. Because I considered it, but uh, yeah. okay, I I seen that ad you were talking about before in the past, Frank. Uh, I never did it, but I don't want to say I'm desperate, but this is my, my newest plan of attack, what I'm doing, because uh, the warm the weather's getting warmer. So usually during your stream, when you're on Frank Live during lunch, I usually stop and I'll have a drink before I pick up my wife at a local bar for happy hour. And uh, <laughs> I'm actually considering uh, buying people a drink if they'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. I know now, that's not a bad idea. But... Hey, if somebody's going to buy me a three dollar uh, beer or a five dollar mixed drink, I'll subscribe to your YouTube channel, even though you ain't got to do nothing. So, I mean, that's where the point I'm at. Because uh, ever since I joined the Clay people, I met you, Frank, and you know, you introduced me to a lot of people that are good people. I probably picked up thirty to forty people off of just Clay's channel alone, which is cool. And I'm not looking to jump on any other channels besides, you know, 
you know, you, Frank, or Kalani, or Pikazan, I'll support yeah. you guys. But other than that, I'm not going to go. I'm not looking to go talk to the other guys because there's just not enough time in a day. So, so that's actually what I'm actually considering doing in the next, you know, couple months because I want to, you know, I do want to get to the 1,000 thing. You know, not for bragging rights or nothing, but I just want to get there to try to make a so, couple dollars off of it. So something I would like to recommend um, that really helped my Twitch are Discord communities. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Discord. Yep, yep, um, I've seen it before, yep. yep. Yep, so Discord communities really, really helped me out, especially within gaming. That they, you know, people who are really passionate about supporting each other and stuff like that. You know, even just as viewers, um, not just streamers, but yeah, you know, they they really helped me um, progress with my followers and having my concurrent three viewers and stuff. Because oftentimes it was just me watching myself. So, yeah. yeah. The, the problem I'm running into is right now. Well, the past two months, uh, ever since 1348 blew up, uh, it, it's been hard to to run options channels, you know, I, I've got the regulars who are in there, but ever, ever since the 1348s come out, the, everyone's over, you know, with short the VIX, TMI, and Review Dork over on Gabe's channel. So it, it's really hard right now for, for me, you know, I, I do I do it for the members of our community who want to come by and, you know, keep, keep it in the family here, but man, it's just there's so many people over on their channels and now, um, uh, uh, Matt, TMI, and uh, Vix, th they've all been cool about me super chatting on their streams advertising my channel in there. They th they've all been cool with it and everything. Like, But uh, it it's just hard because, you know, so the 1348, so many people are making money with it, right? I'm, make I'm starting to make money with it. So it's kind of hard to grow the channel when everybody mm -hmm. wants to, be, you know, everyone wants to be in their live streams every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm at a disadvantage because I've got an eight to five job. I'm working the entire duration the market's open, except for my lunch stream. Okay, so what I would recommend, Frank, is either getting pictures of girls in two piece bikinis that are cute as a clickbait, or tell people you're going to show them how to make a million dollars in a month, and you'll get you get a lot of people. I'm, I'm not saying it to be you know stupid or disrespectful, but if people believe there's a chance of making money and they don't have to do nothing except just watch you for ten seconds. They're going to show up. That, that's what I believe. Because, Kalani, I'm not saying this because I'm older, but the young generation, they believe that everything should be given to them. And I'm not saying that, Kalani, be disrespectful to you or nothing, but there's a lot of people out there that say, you know what? I deserve it. Give it to me. I'm not going to work for it. And like I said, the, the, the problem with that is you should know me by now. I'm transparent on my channel. Yeah. And. I always try to, you know, be honest and accurate. So for yeah, me to yeah. come out and say, well, watch my channel and you'll make a million dollars overnight. I, I, I can't do that because that's just, you know, that's not me. Yeah. So I, I, that's what I mentioned because I've got the moral high ground. I, because, okay, Klein, I'll let you talk in a second. So let me say this while I'm thinking. Now, Frank, I do the same thing as you. I'm pretty sure you go to bed at night and bang your head against the wall and go, how could we have X amount of people watch X amount of people on the same channel that we're on, and I'm going to teach you how to make money, and people don't show up. It's just like I'm trying to show people how to cut grass and say, hey, this is so easy, even a caveman could do it, and nobody comes to the channel. So it's just, it's total craziness. So sometimes at night, I bang my head against the wall and go, I'm just wasting my time. I could, I could sit home and, and do nothing and watch TV. But yet I'm trying to learn you, and I see where you're coming from, Frank, because I know it's not in my nature either to rip people off or, or steer them in the wrong direction. So it's just, it's just I don't want to say it's aggravating. It's almost frustrating sometimes because I took <clears throat> off last week. I had to make a video for a week because you know what I said? You know what? I'm going to get 12 to 15 views on that video. So I don't know. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a trading bot thing to see if that works, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that thing at the bar. So I don't know what you think about that, but. You know, what your opinion is on that you know i would think it's primarily uh how what am i trying to say it's it's your audience base you know what i mean so like like it just example me my audience that i typically tend to gear towards is you know gaming you know frank is 
the 1348 trading strategies options, you know, that's, that's his audience. Uh, and then yours is, you know, lawn care, maintenance, cutting grass, ways to do it and the equipment used for it, you know, trips and tricks of the trade, you know, things like that. So it's like, you know, uh, I like me personally, I never expected ever to see 700 views on an oil catch can installation that's 30 minutes long for the video. Like I never expected that. Like that's not even something that I gear towards. You know, that's just a video I made, but I never expected it to take off. Never. Like I saw the views yesterday and I was like, holy cow, 760 views. Like I, but you know, with the expectation that, you know, maybe it'll help somebody. So, you know, that 12 views for your video that you get, I mean, that's 12 people that you potentially, you know, hey, maybe that's a really good idea. I should get this mower or that's a really good idea, like how to make money. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the numbers may be small, but that's still 12 people or however many people that you helped. You know what I mean? And same thing with Frank, like that's X many people that, hey, okay, yeah, I can use that 1348 strategy. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's that's how I look at it. Not so much in the sense of, you know, I need to do this. You know, I'm going to work hard and hard and hard and, you know, push and push it to make this exactly how I want it to be now, but as building blocks to get where I need to be. Oh. Simon uh, Simon is going to start playing covered calls soon. I don't know if he started this week, but uh, after being on the channel and Riptide also, uh, they're both uh, – uh, Riptide's like, man, how did I not know about this? You know, he, he, he was just absolutely loving, you know, the, the way he's teaching how to, you know, have your account start generating revenue for you. That, you know, because so many people are buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold. That's all they do, and it's like, right, yeah, you can, you, can, you can buy and hold and wait, or you can start making money now, and that means that you know you take some of the money you're making and put some of it into your buy and hold, but then you have the rest that you know you're, you're actively <clears> trading <throat> and making more money now. Because the past three weeks, I, I made like twenty six hundred dollars. Dang. Nice, yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, I was killing it. Last week alone, I did. I had uh, five five trades at it. I only did five trades all of last week, and I had one trade that uh, was bad. Uh, UVXY, I lost fifty two dollars on. My other four trades, uh, I think my total for the week, I was up like three hundred and eighty, three hundred ninety dollars on the week. Nice. Man, so yeah, yeah it, it's like you know, sit, sit there. That's the thing. People, they're they're so hung up on their P and L. My God, AMC's down. I'm losing money. This and that. Screw your P and L. Stop looking. If you're if you're buy and hold, you shouldn't be staring at the, the up and down movements because they're irrelevant to the short squeeze. Me, I'm an active options trader. I do not look at my P and L. I look at. How much money did I lose on trades? How much money did I gain on trades? Did I gain more than I lost? Yes. Okay. It was a good week. I made money. And the, the, everyone wants it now. They want the MOAS now. It's like they're going to drag this out. And if you're just sitting there waiting, then you're, you've you got all this money tied up that's not actually doing anything for you. Hmm. Okay. But, but my thoughts on that are I agree with you 100%. And uh, their vengeance, you know, vengeance from our uh, Clay's channel. I don't agree with him at all because of his dumb comments. And if he's watching, hey, it's okay. Uh, he did make a comment that uh, we really need to teach people about market cap because uh, so many people jump on the channel. I know we don't want to chase them away, but I mean, realistically, like say when if she got to a, when got should. to a, if she got to a dollar. <laughs> There'd be more money than there is in the world. So we really need to just teach, like, I mean, these are like the 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 basics that people need to understand. And so I mean that that's that's what I think. And I, I do agree with what he said the other day, even though I don't agree with 99% of what else he says, but but that that's true. So yep, 
and, and pe- the, the problem we're running into is, you know, people come in there and they'll hear a catch word on someone's stream or on a video and they'll come in and uh, have, you, have you all seen the princess bride? The, the, the one guy, inconceivable, inconceivable. And uh, M- Manny Pinkerton's like, uh, I don't think that word means what you think it means. It's like people are using these catch words and they're, they're trying to, they want to be part of the conversation. They hear these catch words and these buzzwords and they want to use them, but they have no flipping clue what they're talking about. They, they hear all these things, you know, they, they're kicking out these ideas and they don't understand how market plumbing works. They don't understand how, you know, they don't understand some of the basics about how it, and that's why, you know, even with the options trading, it's like, give me a person who's never done any options. I will start with day zero. I, I will, you know, we will go over from the very first day when you open up and look at, okay, dictionary, options. We, we will start at that level and build as far as you want to build. It's, but th- they don't understand the plumbing of how, how everything works and that's that's what's hurting retail investors right now is you get these people they've got money they they know they know the plays there but they they don't understand a lot of the walk of it and they don't understand you know how it all works i am definitely one of those people i'm very very ignorant and new to investing like i've only started investing aside from my employer contributed 401k since uh the beginning of october when everything started going nuts my friend was like hey man you should look in a ship and i've known about cryptocurrencies and everything but you know i fomoed in and you know since since then i have been on youtube every day hours a day listening learning as much as i can and i'm definitely one of those people like especially when it comes to stocks and options and calls and puts and stuff like that like i say those things but i don't know what they actually do yet so yeah i'm definitely one of those people very ignorant but willing to learn so yes so, throw my future so but by you by you watching you're actually ahead of the game and you're trying to learn mm-hmm. um i got two comments here i want to say real fast before i let's jump say something frank uh number one frank i don't know if you agree with me but in life people only hear what they want to hear so you mm-hmm. can tell them this ain't going to happen. They're not going to hear it. They just hear what they want to hear. So it's very selective hearing. And so I'll tell you another funny thing, Frank and Kalani, since you guys are still here, because I want to pass some of my knowledge on to you guys, which it might not be much, but it's something. Next time you guys go out to eat somewhere at a sit-down restaurant, it don't matter if it's Applebee's or a top-of-the-line restaurant, wherever it might be, a high-dollar restaurant where you live, when your waitress or waitress comes to you and you're done, and you're going to give them a tip and they say, is everything good? Here's your final bill. You're going to pay them and tell them, say, hey, this tip for you, take the rest of it and put it into Dogecoin. And 99% of the time, they'll look at you like they have no idea what you're talking about or say it's for Bitcoin. And just I'm telling you, people <clears throat> in the general area are, I don't want to say ignorant as being dumb or mean, but they're very ignorant in regards to they have no idea is what you know a cryptocurrency is so just kind of just do it just for fun just for last to yourself and go hey instead of putting this to your college fund you know put it to your bitcoin fund and they're going to be like what the hell is bitcoin so we'll just, mm-hmm. just try it next time it's pretty funny and you're going to see probably 90 percent of the people have no idea what you're talking about so at least by you mm-hmm. watching the videos and myself like i said in a couple other videos in the past which nobody watched at least you're trying to get ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? You might have missed the bus in regards to meaning that you missed the peak of the moment, but at least you're on the bus still trying to, to catch back up. So that's just my two cents on that. So, that. so, You know, and it's honestly, so I watched a video earlier this morning. I don't know if you guys know who Andre Jake is. He's like a part of the millennial money group with like me. Kevin used to be in it. Andre Jake, um, uh, Graham Stephan, and then there's a fourth one. Have you guys heard of any of them? Is that like uh, cryptocurrency or stocks? Uh, stocks, real estate investing. No. Um, the stock. Um, I asked Frank any stock questions on that. <clears throat> so those are my. I want. There's the fourth one, and I forget his name right now. But meet Kevin, very popular. 
Andre Jake, and um, Graham Stephan, or Stephen Stephan. But they are all about what's going on with the economy, Federal Reserve, CPI, FOMC, you know, that, like, I get a lot of my worldly news and stuff like that from them because they correlate it in regards to how it affects the economy and the stock market and stuff like that. But anywho, there was a poll um, in regards to investments uh, between stocks and crypto, and it went through 4,000 participants in each generation from Gen X, Gen Z, Millennials, and the Boomers. And for the Boomer generation, it was really not so much surprising to see the number or the percent in which Boomers invest in stocks, but it was kind of surprising to see that it was, I think it was like 8% of the 4,000 hold individuals of boomers actually know about and invest in crypto. And I thought that was really interesting because, you know, I think about like my father, like he's like, oh, don't waste your time on crypto. You know, it's not going to be anything related to him worth investing, but stocks for him are definitely worth investing in. But for me, my generation, it was like a 50, 50 split, mm-hmm. like, you know, but it's something that's, necessarily new to us but we have a lot of time in the market for cryptocurrency so it was just really interesting but i definitely recommend those uh youtube channels okay i got a good comment but go ahead frank go ahead see what you're gonna thinking oh i was just you know you know i don't know where i fit in as far you know they have all these generational labels and stuff I, i don't pay attention to that nonsense uh but yeah, I, I do. I do stocks. I do cryptos. Uh, you know, and you know, for for someone who's like a first time viewer on my channel, they would think, okay, the, this guy's a, a one trick pony. But I've gone through with you know R- Riptide and a couple others, and I've helped them. You know, w- with different strategies they can use in long term dividend investment portfolios for their grandchildren and children to set up accounts for them to start saving for their future so when their kids you know when their kids turn 20 30 you know 35 years old you know they've they're already have a portfolio that is making them you know every month they've got money coming in and they don't they wouldn't have to work and you know it's it's that type of you know i'm not a one-trick pony my entire you know everything's not based on options for me i play crypto I don't understand a lot of it, but I, I still recognize that, you know, the, the usefulness of it. Yeah, you know, there's Paul with his. Uh... Jeff, sure. sure. <clears throat> but then, anyways, you see, you see the chart I showed you. That AMC is my stuff, but the rest is my grandson's stuff that, that we talked about. Frank doing the weekly investment stuff. <clears throat> Apples and yep. that is all my grandson's stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I've got I've got my my spreadsheets with my portfolio on it. I've got my you know my my payday tracker for you know on each payday. Have I invested in you know the stocks for my long term portfolio? It, it's, and I'm starting late. You know, I'm 40 years old. And, you know, I started investing you know just before my 40th birthday, but I, I I'm in there. I've I've got a fairly good fairly good idea what I will you know what my goals are, and I understand what it takes to to get to them and i know hey, it's not going to be grass cutters on here. hey bowman we got a grass cutter guy in here how's our friend bowman doing but go ahead i'm listening go ahead i'm sorry but yeah it's like you know it, I, I, had a, I had a bunch of stocks in there that were non-dividend stocks that i had because they were in good sectors those sectors uh started to run up and I exited those to move them over because I was looking, you know, I wanted to get more capital for doing more active options trading. And it's like right now, uh, I think that my actual investments, the, the stocks and cryptos that I hold make up about, I would say, 60 to 70 percent of my portfolio. And the rest is active trading cash. So, so I maintain uh you know, 
through uh, buying power and active <clears throat> options trading, that's where I maintain 30% of my portfolio is actively trading. And I understand that because that's that's where I'm generating this money. You know, it takes money to make money. So that's uh, and, and I I fell into the buy and hold, and I fell into you know not having any any buying power when when my money hit my account. I would uh, you know invest it in the stocks and everything. And I've you know I've seen so much growth since I've really stepped up my options trading. It's just r ridiculous, you know. And yeah, it's. I, I want to get to the point where I'm making enough money on options, pay off everything I owe, and then start working on a monthly in, or monthly or weekly income, and not have to you know get to the point where I don't have to work anymore. I, I'm hoping to achieve that in you know maybe the next. Well, if Moas happens, it, it, it'll be real soon. But even, <laughs> even without the Moas, I'll probably be able to retire in three years. That's good. Man, that's awesome. Hey, hey, real quick, uh, we got a friend in here, uh, Bowman. He's friends with Drew from Drew's Property Maintenance. Uh, Bowman, this is our friend Frank, up in the top right, the biker-looking guy. Uh, he's on Drew's channel. He subscribed. Kalani's going to subscribe after the, the show tonight. Uh, he can answer any stocks, questions, and options. Uh, thank you for stopping by. In which He's got a question. He wants to know, when is Shiba Ina going to go up? So we're going to leave this to Kalani because Kalani's young guy, Bowman. <laughs> He's all on him now. We've been learning him. So Man, <clears throat> you know, I am not a financial analyst. I am by no means financial advice. Like, I am very, very new. When is SHIB going to go up? Uh, uh, it could, it, it depends. I mean, we, with so much bad news going on, and it also depends on how much you're expecting it to go up. Like for us to see those all time highs, man, it's going to take a lot, honestly. Like, I can't even begin to lay out the groundwork and what it would take. Like, war would probably have to go away in Ukraine. Um, some clarity from the Fed. Um, and, you know, this is just from me speaking on the videos that I've watched for my news and catalysts that could, you know, bring us to the upside. Um, you know, it's, I'd, I'd really hate to speak on that because of my ignorance, but <clears throat> uh, just from what I've learned in regards to, you know, what will it take? Um, I can't give you a time period. Me personally, I'm thinking clarity sometime in May or June market wise, you know, but that's just me, you know, we're going to see something some kind of clarity from the Federal Reserve, you know, whether they truly are going to be hawkish or dovish, the basis point hikes for inflation, what's going on with war, what it's going to look like next year, you know, all these different things that can sway the market one way or the other, personally. So it's just time and seeing what's going to happen and staying on top of the news, honestly. That's my biggest thing. Hey, if I could just jump in real quick. Uh, before you jump on, Frank, he's going to want to talk about Dogecoin, too. Uh, Bowman, there's a link in the chat if you want to jump in. It's up towards the top. Um, <clears throat> and Bowman, uh, I don't mind if you put down the name of your channel. Uh, my friend Frank and my friend Kalani, they'll both subscribe. I see you're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, Frank's got his own channel. Uh, he talks about stocks uh, and doing uh, options on stocks. And Kalani, uh, he's a gamer. He's got two channels. He's big time. He's on <laughs> Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> So if you could uh, put your uh, uh, name of your channel on there, because I want to get to 1,000 subscribers and they can watch the, the chickens being boring and they'll subscribe back to you. That's for sure, because we're all about growing the channel. So, uh, Frank, you want to say anything? He wants to know he has SHIB and Doge. What do you think? Well, uh, I'll, I'll touch on SHIB first, but uh, I, I definitely think, Kalani, for the, the remainder of the year, because of the tapering of the bonds, I think we're going to be hawkish throughout the rest of the year, and I would anticipate uh, a total throughout the year probably of a one to one and uh, one to one and a half percent increase done incrementally hawkish on the, the interest rates. Uh, as far as sheep coin, I'm fairly certain it'll at least double by the end of the year. I, th I think we'll get back up to. Uh, I think we'll, we'll probably. 
you know, we stand at a damn good chance of getting up about, uh, you know, ab about 6,000 points per coin. Uh, I think there's, you know, we're really going to need more utility to step in. Now they've done they've done amazing utility work with SHIB, uh, SHIB, but I think we need a little bit more utility built into it. And you know, I, I figure about a fifty percent chance of us dropping a zero by by the end of the year. But I, I think certainly by the end of the year we should at least double on SHIB. Uh, Doge Doge is more hype driven. I'm, I'm not, you know, there is a little bit of utility out there on it, but it nowhere, you know, it pales in comparison to the utility of SHIB right now. Um, the, the same thing, you know, we could maybe see uh, by the end of the year on Doge, maybe up 50%, maybe double up by the end of the year. Uh, you know, if, if those are the numbers you're looking for, I think there's a high possibility of them as far as, you know, the, the people saying, Oh, d doge to a dollar on this time period, no, d doge to a penny within the next five years would still be absolutely insane for it to get that high. But, you know, I, I think we got a 50, 50 shot of dropping the zero by the end of the year. I'm holding you to that, Frank. It better happen. Yeah, no kidding. I was gonna say, man, that's I don't know. Me, I'm I'm a pessimistic person. You know, I'm a very hope for the worst or hope for the best, expect the worst kind of person. If yeah. I can see, you know, the high for this year being five or six, I'm cool with that. That's what I'm expecting. You know what I mean? Um, mm, to drop a zero, I would almost think next year. But that's just me. You know what I mean? That's my pessimistic mindset. But you are right with the utility. Like, that's a big deal. It's a 50-50 shot. If, mm -hmm. if they continue working at developing more more utility to it, if they continue working on the burns, we stand a chance. It's just how how active are they going to be at, at growing this, about, you know, growing the ecosystem for it? And uh, mm -hmm. what, what's it? Ship meta universe? Ship the metaverse? Yeah. It, they built that, but as far as I know, it doesn't run on sheep. So, I mean, what's the point of putting, they're putting a name in there to try and hype it up because it's the hot coin and, you know, everybody's building utility around it. Well, why are you, why are you using the name and not adding utility for it? it, 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 it it's, it's stupid. You know, that's I believe there's purchasing burn portals. I thought I had read and heard about that. Like, depending on your purchases that you make within the metaverse, that there's supposed to be burn portals that take a percentage of the purchase and burn the SHIB. I don't want to be quoted on that, but I'm, I feel like I read or heard that somewhere by a YouTube or an article. That's as of now, that's the only thing related to the metaverse with SHIB, unfortunately. Really would have been nice if, you know, there was more utility <clears throat> in regards to the metaverse with SHIB, because that could have been a huge catalyst for SHIB, for sure. Yeah, I got to figure out how to make you a mod. I'm trying to figure that out. My wife does that. <laughs> oh, and you here we go. They're forming up. What's forming up? Oh, uh, the NASCAR race uh, was rain delayed. They're, they're, they're forming up the field right now. They're at uh, uh, the half mile paperclip at Martinsville, Virginia. Frank, are you watching the race tonight at 1 a.m.? <laughs> uh, 2, 2 a.m. my time. Uh, if I can't, it, 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 if I'm not able to stay up for it, I've got I've already got my TiVo set up to start 10 minutes early and stop one hour later. Nice. So yeah. regardless, even if I don't watch it, I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have it on my TiVo. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, something else, this is random. So like this morning I was watching a meet Kevin video. He went to the Tesla Gigafactory in Dallas, 
they had like this big uh, kind of Tesla con, if you will. And, uh, you know, he was starting to speak on the future of Tesla. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, just curious, what are you guys' thoughts on Tesla, like both as a vehicle and a stock? As a stock, I think it's immensely overpriced right now. Uh, I, I definitely think they should do a stock uh, a split on it because not only is a stock expensive, the, the options you're looking in order to enter any kind of any kind of single like options contract, you need over a thousand dollars, and that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, as far as a company, I'm not 100 percent sold on the EV craze. I live in an area where it gets down negative 30, negative 30 below negative 30, 40 below zero. Uh, those batteries out in the cold they're not going to last long and when the battery packs cost anywhere from uh 16 to twenty thousand dollars for your battery pack it's just you know, they're nice in some areas in fact uh the, the pace truck in the race is actually uh an f-150 lightning one of the ford electric trucks but yeah hmm. de depending upon where you live the problem is a lot of the uh a lot of the electrical vehicle charging stations are still running off plants that are using fossil fuels. So yeah, it, it, it sounds good. Like I care about the environment. I have an e. I've got an uh, electric vehicle. Okay, well, what about all the steps that are taken? Uh, you know, all, all the all the hydrocarbons. You know, all, all the fossil fuels that are used to pull the materials from the ground to to you know extract to refine them. To, you know. It, they think it's a clean option, and yeah, the, the carbon emissions from the vehicle itself are negligible. But when you look at you know how much it takes to actually build the vehicle to, to power the vehicles, uh, it, it just reminds me of the the, the, the wind turbines. You know, w wind turbines. It, it would take like two hundred years for a wind turbine to, to, to pay for zero. itself. To, to reach net zero carbon emissions and pay for yeah. itself. Yeah, it, it, it sounds good. You know, it's good. It is good for the environment, but it could be the environment on the back end. Hey, real quick, uh, Frank, throw a link in there so you can subscribe to Bowman's channel, and uh, he'll subscribe to yours. And uh, Kalani, put your link in there too because you dropped him in on our on our chat now. But to go back to the Tesla thing, uh, I got Tesla Solar City right by me in Buffalo, New York. It's probably 20 minutes away, and I hate to say it, it was a huge waste of money. Uh, I do like Tesla, but the state of New York gave so much money for them guys to build a factory here and make jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a friend who's a personal friend mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, he's a union carpenter, and there was not enough work at the actual job site at the Tesla, so he actually went there for three to four weeks and actually got paid crazy money to do absolutely nothing except sit there and do nothing to collect his 40 hour pay, but he had to actually be in the factory at the time. So hmm. uh, the Tesla's, Tesla's a good thing, but they took crazy money out of New York state to make a factory and uh, to, to produce solar panels. And, and I really don't think it's living up to what it's supposed to be, but, but I do believe in Tesla, you know, that guy's very knowledgeable and mm -hmm. he's got super cool. <clears throat> so uh, to get back on topic with what I was getting to um, when I was watching that Kevin or uh, that video from me, Kevin, he was laying down some intriguing information and like food for thought. And that was with Tesla being like one of the successful pioneers for the electric vehicles. Uh, you know, they're having a real big uh, supply for their demand, you know, supplying the amount of <clears throat> vehicles for their customers. And the only way to combat that is by creating more plants and you know building more cars and looking like 10 years down the road uh you know projecting and assuming that the price of that stock would go up so i don't know that was just something that kind of struck me as like you know hmm, you know that's not something that i had considered you know like yeah the price is high now how high can it go in the near future but you know not necessarily keep the blinders on and you know like look further down the road yeah i just yeah. thought it was interesting yeah like i said that i do believe in a tesla but it's very expensive as a stock so unfortunately i can't afford it right now 
Oh yeah, maybe I can't someday, <laughs> maybe someday if the MOS ever happens at the AMC stock, maybe um, I can get into it. But <clears throat> like I said, you just don't know. My crystal mm -hmm. ball is not working no more, so <laughs> it's hard to say. Hey Frank, drop a link in there, and so same with you, Klein, in the chat. So oh, yeah. you guys subscribe I'm, to the channel. I'm Trying to find the link right now. I just uh, I just subscribed to uh, Bowman's channel. Uh, I'm having trouble on my PC finding where my link is. Uh-oh. Not good. If you just uh, click on your channel in a browser, like just a normal browser, and then go up to where you type in www.whatever.com, you can, like, copy and paste it. Oh. Yep. Yeah, he bought, he bought Twitter... Bowman it went up ten dollars the last couple of days. Our friend Frank up here, he follows stocks like crazy. But uh I just keep up on the news and listen to what these guys are talking about. Uh Frank's doing it right now. Still working on it. <clears throat> there you go. Oh my god, my camera does have really good quality. He looks like a million dollars. That's for sure. Oh. Hey, Kalani, is your uh, is that a comforter in your dryer? It looks like it's done. Uh, no, I don't know what that is in the dryer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's been there for days. <laughs> it's been there since this morning. Just put it uh, back on for a couple of minutes, and all the wrinkles will disappear. Hang on, I had something to talk about as soon as I do this real quick. Yeah, let me go. That's a great thing about being on my computer. I can uh, I can do multiple things at once. Oh wait, yeah, I can just do that on the Mac. Derp. Yeah, I'm doing everything on the computer, and I've got because I'm doing the stream on my phone right now. Nice. You got a new truck, Bowman? What kind you get? The newest one I got is a 2017 Chevy 2500. You can't find no new oh. trucks around here. Just about impossible in Buffalo. Six month waiting list. If you want to order a new one, and that's no guarantee of what what's comes with it, option wise or color. They just call you if they got it or when oh they get God, it. He's toasting the bead. <laughs> I, I've done that before. <laughs> What'd you do, Frank? I missed it. What? No, no. I, I'm, I'm watching one of. Uh, I've got one of Bowman's videos up where uh, he, he's using the fluid to toast the bead to seal the tire. I've actually done that before. Yeah, that's sweet, man. It, it, uh, I, I think it's a little short. So, oh, that's what I was going to say. So I had heard about all of the stuff going on with uh, GameStop and AMC, uh, but I never got into it you know, with the whole short share stuff, like when it started happening, but I never got into it because I was never into finance and stocks. So I've always felt like I was late to the game. So even still today, like I don't own any GameStop or AMC. Actually, I don't own any stock to my knowledge other than whatever my 401k has invested for me, which I don't know, honestly. Yeah, I. the only reason I jumped into AMC is over the last couple months, I've been following and buying uh, for probably since the uh, C word started almost two years ago. I've been playing with the uh, cryptos. Uh, we got some free money from uh, the president, so I use that to mess around. In uh, in regards to AMC, the only reason I got into AMC is because uh, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, those are the two my two major holdings. I really don't go after long shots no more. Mm -hmm. And I jumped on AMC figuring that maybe because everything else has been sideways for so many months that I would just go for something else and see what happens. So I have a question for Frank, and that is now it is it so like for you just personally, you, you don't have to answer this, but is it is it a pain in the butt come tax time being a day trader? Like is 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 the income you make from day trading worth worth it when it comes to tax time? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, as long as you're making money. Uh, yeah. I, I've got a great, uh, you know, depending upon the week, depending upon you know what my tolerances are, uh, and, and how careful I'm getting on the 
the position, I've got a hit rate of about 80 to 85 uh, percent. Wow. So I, I, I'm a careful trader, though. That's the thing. I don't I, I'm more about getting the base hits. I very rarely swing for the fences. Uh, now, as far as taxes go, uh, last year's returns, but before I did my investments in, I was getting back about three hundred dollars. And after putting my investments in, I'm paying seven hundred and twenty five dollars. So j just off uh, just off the gains and everything. And I did have some losses that I was able to, to write in and claim. But uh, just off that, it was a thousand dollars swing on my taxes from my investments. But, you know, like I said, just the past three weeks alone, I I've made, you know, over twenty five, you know, twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars in the past three weeks. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> so, so yeah, as far as, you know, be, and you know, I do, I, I do maybe two day trades a week. Uh, a lot of them are swing trades. I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll see see the entry, see what mm -hmm. I want to happen. I'll get the position. I'll hold them maybe two or three days, and I'll exit them. You know, so I'm a more cautious trader. Uh, mm -hmm. that's why my hit rate is, is so high just because, and you know, it, uh, Cl Clay made the joke on the live stream that man, for first perfect trader or anything like, nope, no, no, don't start mm -hmm. that because, you know, uh, on my channel, I'll tell you my losses is, you know, just as quickly as I tell you my wins because the, the losses are the ones you learn from. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so true. Okay. Our friend Bowman, <clears throat> he wants to know what's a good, good coin to get into now. Uh, Bowman, I would say. I haven't bought any crypto probably in almost three months now. Uh, so what I got, I'm just holding on to. I got some Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, some Dogecoin. Oh, my God. I got some Mana, um, some Polygon, some Solana, and a couple other uh, longer shots off of the Gemini account. Um, it depends what state you're in. I live in New York, so we really can't get too much coins. I just could only use Coinbase or an account called Gemini. So I couldn't tell you a good coin to get into right now. I really, really don't spend much time researching them. Um, Cause a lot of the last couple months, they've been all the negative and losing money. So maybe Frank and Kalani will let you know what they're thinking on. If they got anything uh, long shots or something here, they might be hoping it's so, going to happen. Not financial advice. <laughs> this, is, this is not an endorsement of any, uh, Hey, Bowman could sue me if he wants. My wife owns everything, so he's not going to get nothing. So whatever you're thinking, go ahead and shout it out. Well, for, for me, it's uh, – so, yeah, I, I've got the – you know, I've, I've got my graphics card pulling earning Doge. Uh, that's the only thing I'm mining, thanks to Paul. Uh, I hold Doge as far as I've got a BlockFi card that earns me 1.5% on all my purchases. Uh, I've got interest-bearing uh, crypto on Doge, Link, Ethereum, uh, there, there are five that I have that uh, I actually earn interest on to where I, I get uh, I get more every month. Uh, God, what is... Oh, hey, let me... Uh, let me pause, get over. I, I can pull my stuff up real fast. <clears throat> uh, my regular, uh, the, the crypto that I regularly invest in, every two weeks I buy another $50 worth of sheep coin. And every 5% uh, every dip on Doge, I purchase between 50 to 100 additional coins. But uh, let me get this up here. The, the cryptos that I have in an interest-bearing uh, interest bearing cryptos are Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Uniswap, and Chainlink. So those are those are my fave mo uh, my main five interest-bearing. I mine Bitcoin, and my active trades are Shiba Doge. So that that's my entire crypto portfolio right there. So Frank, do you like? You said trade bearing, so like you you like buy the buy the dips, sell the high kind of thing with your Shib and Doge, or uh, no, with, with Shib, I am just uh, 
Shape for now is is uh, buy only. Uh, Doge. What I ended up doing was I did uh, cost averaging down uh, on five five percent dip. I was buying a hundred coins. I got up to uh, nine hundred coins, and Doge had that spike. What was it? Four days ago. Uh, when it was coming off the tail end of that spike, I saw there was going to be a bit of a pullback on it. So when it when it dipped down, I think it I think it got it dropped like two two or three percent on the daily. I I saw the pullback coming, so I sold off eight hundred fifty Doge at that point. And since then, I, the next dip that came up, I bought fifty. <clears throat> The second dip, I bought another hundred, so I'm back up to two hundred coins. And that one, I'm actively trading, I'm applying the dips, watching my average, waiting on a run. And if I get a run that gets me up to about twelve to fourteen percent, uh, I exit a majority of the position. So th th that's that's the one that I'm actively uh, buying and selling. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, I guess it's on me. <laughs> so, again, I'm I'm fairly uh, new to crypto uh, in terms of investing, anyways, because I'm very stingy. I want to know everything. You know what I mean? What what's on the white paper? You know what projects? What utility? X, Y, and Z. So, of my crypto portfolio, personally, uh, eighty-five to ninety percent of it is shit. And just for transparency's sake, my goal for my cap off for the amount of SHIB is a hundred million. That way, if it ever does reach that one cent mark or gets me to the point where I can pull out my original investment and then everything from there on is all just gains, you know? So everything from my original investment is just all passive income from that point on. That's my goal with it. So SHIB makes up about 80 to 90 percent. But head, buddy, come on, get down. Come on, big boy. <laughs> um, Lonnie, I sent you a message. You see it in the chat? I left you something in the chat. Read it. Come on, please stop meowing. PP is not here. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so, and again, that's not me recommending it. Um, but that's just what I have. Aside from that, I have what Coinbase has given me, which is Bitcoin, Doge, Stellar, Ethereum, Graph, Fetch, Render, Amp, and Scale. But, you know, for the most part, it's shit. And that's only because I believe in the project, I see its potential, and the capability for me to make my money back. Now, there are other tokens that I pay attention to, specifically um, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, um, Polygon, um, and really those are like the top ones. And the, the reason I, I say I'm paying attention to those is because I believe in what they're doing, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's hard for me to recommend something that I don't even own, let alone say you should buy these. So it, for me, it's it investing in cryptocurrency anyways, is do I believe in it? Can it make me money? And is it going somewhere? You know, it's not from my aspect because I'm not a trader, not yet anyways. Hey, one second. Hey, Frank, uh, Bowman wants to jump in here. How can I get this to drop in the chat? He don't see it in the chat. <clears throat> can you see that on the screen? It says my name in my stream yard. He should be Let able to know. just scroll all the way to the top of the chat. And he see said, I can see, I see, see it on the screen. Uh, yeah. Let me ch check the chat itself. It's way towards the top, but he says he don't see it. So I don't want to be rude. Let him in if he wants to come in. But if yeah, I go I yeah, he's really going to have to to scroll high up to get that. Uh, I see it on the main screen, but it's not in the chat itself. Mm. Well, I, we're working I on it. 
give me a second. I got a ton of notifications here. So he said he has 30 million Dogelon. Hmm. Speaking of, you know, Doge is up 5.1% today. Yeah. Oh, Danelle liked the tweet. Uh, oh, <clears throat> that, that's something else. Okay, Mom okay. is maybe going to help me out. Let's see what we got here. You know, and as far as, like, those meme tokens, like, you know, like, kind of like what SHIB was, um, you know, something like Dogelon or Zombie Inu, you know, those kind of, up and okay, coming e news and stuff like they're i mean they definitely have potential it's just me personally like i haven't seen enough to believe in it you know what i mean so i'm a real big person when it comes to that like like if i'm gonna put my money in it you know i want to make sure they can put their money where their mouth is kind of thing and make me believe in the project i'm investing in in the future hey. And for me with Sheeb, you got to realize I've been in Sheeb, uh, you know, it's currently somewhere between 24 to 2,600 points right now. Uh, I've been in Sheeb since it was at 741. So I, I've been in Sheeb for quite a while. Now. Man. Oh. So, yeah. So, so Sheeb, when I talk about Sheeb, Sheeb is one that I, I really believe in. And, and I'm still actively investing in it. In fact, so, Sheeb, I believe, is... The largest crypto holding right now. Yeah. How long ago was that? I got in uh, Sheeb in October of last year. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I got I got into Sheeb the day May? it listed on Weeble. The day it listed, I was already – that was the day I jumped in. I, I don't so know exactly when that was. April, May, maybe? No, could, so you could gained have been, a lot. I, I did. I started. I actually started investing on May seventh, so mm -hmm. it definitely, definitely wasn't in April. I, I've been in the market less than a year. Same. <laughs> so you've gained quite a bit just from sheep. Yeah, I, I've I've gained quite a bit. I, I've rolled my position a couple times on it. Uh, yeah, I, I rolled my position. I moved uh, some assets over, bought back in on it. Uh, I think I'm I'm probably sitting about seventy million somewhere around there, seventy million coin right now. I got three point four or three point six million coin. Yeah, it's like I said. It, it, every two weeks when I get my pay uh, paycheck, because so uh, all savage. the trades, all, all, all the trading I do is on uh, Robinhood, but Sheeb, uh, the only place I'm available to get it is on Weeble. I'm I actually had my uh, my portfolio split between Robinhood, Robinhood and Weeble, and when I was setting up my channel to go live, I pulled all investments except for Sheeb off of Weeble and consolidated on Robinhood. So I pretty use, much. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. I use Coinbase and uh, crypto, and actually last year I don't know how it came across it in October. I seen uh, Elon Musk was on a live or something talking about it. And I told her, I said, I don't know nothing about this. I said, get me some. I said, I want some. I want it now. <laughs> so she stayed up all night, one night, and it went into the next day. And finally, we figured it out. And it was on uh, Coinbase, I believe. <clears throat> so something I forgot to mention uh, with my, you know, what to buy again not financial advice but something me personally that i've been looking into are stablecoin and the apy and mainly because you know with financial banks right now having such low apy return like point zero something um point zero six yeah a few months ago it wasn't even probably wasn't even two months ago, maybe, um, I closed out my local bank that I had here because I wasn't going to have an interest rate that was less than 1% while inflation is expected 2% every year and we're sitting at 7%. So it's like, why am I going to leave my money in a bank? Granted, it's protected, FDIC insured, but it's losing its value every year. 
So, you know, I started searching around and I found one finance and they have a 1% savings and a 3% auto save savings. So every purchase I make, it's kind of like acorn. It'll take 10% out of all of my paychecks. And then it'll take the remainder rounded up to a dollar and put that into a 3% auto save. Oh. So I'm getting 1% in my save and then 3% in my auto save. That's awesome. And that's, that's true. What? It's called one finance. It's an online bank. Is that, do I get stuff in the mail maybe from them? Uh, I think no. I've seen, no, 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 no. Yeah. The other, the other one, I know what you're talking about because I get it as well in the bank, but it's called One Finance. They have like pockets and you have like a spend pocket, save pocket, auto save pocket. You can make other pockets. They're like little mini accounts basically. So but, it's uh, almost not even worth having a, a, a regular like my local bank anymore. It, it, it's up to you. I'm, I can't. Well, <laughs> but me and I'm personally. I'm not taking this. I'm not going to come after you and say you told me the yeah. wrong information. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, me personally, how I seen it was, yeah, my money's insured and everything. Um, one finance, my new online bank is also FDIC insured, just like a normal brick and mortar bank. But yeah. they offer much higher APY savings uh, on your on your money because they claim they don't have the overhead to pay the employees in a brick and mortar store or a brick and mortar bank. So they can offer that kind of stuff to their, to their customers. But the one big thing that I've been looking into are stable coin and, you know, something like USDC um, it's pegged to the price of $1. So it's $1, no matter what, it might fluctuate a hundredth or a, a, a thousandth of a penny, but it's pegged to $1. And if you take it to something like BlockFi and you have your USDC, so say I buy 1,000 USDC and then put it in BlockFi, I get like, I think it's like 7% APY, which you're not going to find that anywhere. Same thing with crypto.com, but the only problem with crypto.com is the price of the Crow coin or Kronos is, you know, it's not pegged to $1. You know, it could be yep. 40 cents for a coin or it could be 50 cents a coin, you know, but you're going to be raising your your gains margin. You know, say if the price goes from 50 cents to a dollar, you know, you can look at that 7% APY. If it is, that's hypothetical. You know, you're actually getting 14% APY. So that's something me personal that I'm considering is taking my money um out not all of it but some of it out out of my savings account and putting it into stable coin where it's easily accessible and i can earn more interest the biggest downside is it's not fdic insured so if something happens like a black fi goes down or something just hypothetical like you lose your money you like there's no insurance on that money or so. russia cyber attacks us <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, Kalani, you cannot actually add to your interest bearing BlockFi currently. What? Uh, yep, uh, it ha happened uh, about a month, month and a half ago. Uh, you cannot add to the money, uh, the, the coin you have actively that you have in your interest bearing will continue yeah. to, to gain more interest in that account, but they have temporarily suspended all interest bearing accounts pending uh, legislation on them. Wow. And, and BlockFi is actually, I think that's uh, uh, the stable coin through there is Gemini right now, hmm. because that my credit my credit card that's the the BlockFi Bitcoin Visa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Crypto.com has something I, just like that. Yeah, but uh, the trouble was because they were uh, there were debates on if they were. Uh, if they were treating the crypto, they viewed it that the cryptos were being tr uh, treated by BlockFi as a standardized security and that's why they, they had to suspend that until they actually yeah. uh, re rework the definition and get the yield rate set right because at mm -hmm. one point I was uh, my stable coin was earning 9% interest man 9% <laughs> interest yeah. that'd be awesome but because so what's the <clears throat> go ahead oh I was going to say because uh, 
the, the links on my YouTube channel, I, I do have the, the link to my BlockFi in there for people who wanted to, to get a BlockFi Visa card and open the account. I got, I got my referral code in there. So what's the next, like, I don't know. I bought into Shiba just because, and it was, it was high, I guess. Everybody was high on it. And then I heard about Dogelon, so I got in that. What's, I guess, what's the, what are you guys, in your opinion, what's a good one to get into for me? That I don't know nothing about it. I just bought it, and I just let it sit there. Ethereum and, and Bitcoin are pretty stable, as far as I understand. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> the, like I said, the only ones I actively trade, uh, I, I actively add to Sheep and I actively trade Doge, the the, the regular Doge, not the the Doge Alon. So you'll you'll just like in the morning you'll see where it's at and either transfer it to another one or sell it or how do, how does the day trading work? I guess. Uh, so for for my Doge, I just uh, I've got it set up to where I get notifications. If I get notified there's a five percent drop in Doge, I just jump right in, look at it. Uh, I've got on on my uh, on my phone, I've got it set up the the thirteen uh, forty eight EMA uh, crossover. I've actually got that set on my crypto as well. So if I see if I see it getting down and I see the the thirteen forty eight crossover coming back to the upside. I jump in and I buy a hundred Doge. If it's still, if it looks like it's still going down, I'll I'll write it down until I get the crossover, mm -hmm. and that's when I'll buy a hundred Doge. So yeah, I, I actively trade it just based off the technicals on it. Mm. We can't yeah, so, hear you, Paul. Or I can't. I'm sorry. Hey Frank, tell him what thirteen forty eight is just real quick because he has no idea probably. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> What it is, it, it's a way of tracking the trends. So you, when you're looking at uh, the charts, you know, you can select the five minute, the three minute, the one hour. You can, you can select your time period. And the way the 1348 does, it shows you the, the movement of the price over the last 13 time units, the last 48 time units, and the last 200 time units. Based on whatever time you select, whether it's so one like minute, three on, minutes, minutes. Like on mine, it has like the the hour, the day, the week, the month, six months, and a yep. year. So that's similar, just breaks it down even more. Well, this you can use uh, the, the 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 farther uh, farther out you look, the, the more you can see the long term trend of the stock. To where I trade it. Uh, I trade it on a lot shorter of a time period, usually three to five minutes. So mm. I'll, I'll look back and see, you know, over the last 13 time units, looking at five, five minute blocks at a time, is a stock going up or down? Well, if, you know, if the, the short term crosses above the long term, that means that it's starting to go upward to where if the, in the short term it's going below the, its long term standing, that means the stock's pulling back. So that so could just I'll look this for one. I'll look for the the sign of it starting to go downward to to where the the short term's dropping below the long term, and that tells me that I'm entering a good buying window. Okay. So you just do this basically all day. <laughs> no, no I, I just wait for the notification. If I get notified, I look at it. If it you know if, if I see the window, if it's you know uh, certainly if it's below my current average, but yeah, uh, I've got to set up you know my. Uh, my brokerage just notifies me on a five percent drop. If I see the five percent drop, that's that's when I look at it. So there are days if I don't get a notification, I don't do anything with it. But, oh, but when you go ahead, Bowman, Paul. Uh, uh, Frank, he's a he's a lineman. Frank, tell him what you do for a living. He thinks you're just a I, day trader. I, <laughs> I, uh, I I work for a cable company doing mainline maintenance on the the mainline coaxial and the fiber optics. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I'm actually a lineman, so most of the days I'm not even looking at the, looking at the market. Oh, yeah. See, I, I worked with a guy. I used to work at a trucking company in a body shop, and he did that day trading. This has been three or four years ago, and I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. He would always <laughs> be on there like, oh, I got to do this and that. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't know what you're talking about. 
Okay, so so to jump back, Bowman, the, the question you need to ask yourself is, you were talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, and you're also talking about Sheeb and uh, Dogelon Marge, which I got on Gemini. Uh, you need to ask yourself, are you looking to uh, make your money uh, in a secure put and not make as much money, but not possibly lose as much money because you could lose all your money in the cryptos? Or are you willing to go and like hit it out of the park like a home run, like with Shiba Inu or Dogelon Marge and make a million bucks, but you might lose whatever little money you got. So so that's a question you got to ask yourself. You know, Do you want something where you got a little risk with some reward that's not going to lose, or do you want something with a major reward, but also a major risk. That's, that's yeah. my, my thoughts on what you got to ask yourself there. And well, also, I'm a, I'm a gambler the, like yes, by, by nature. I just, I like <laughs> gambling. And then somehow, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'll blame the YouTube al the algorithm because they uh, <laughs> pop these videos up and everybody's yeah. like, Oh, get Sheba, get Sheba. So I'm like, give me Sheba. Now I want it now. <laughs> so we got it. I don't. I don't know. It just. It just sits there and and like the other day, she was up a little bit. So I got out of there and I went to uh, Bitcoin for a little bit and then I went to Solano or Solana or it's something. Yeah, just, good one. Yep, good. Yep. Just uh, and I think I lost like five dollars. I'm like, what the heck? I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, but five bucks is it's nothing. It's like getting a coffee and a hamburger. So <laughs> Yeah. But but the uh I don't remember what I was gonna ask now. Okay, when you're when you're doing the day trading, are you swapping like converting from Shiba to, to Ethereum or are you actually like, Cash like out. cashing Frank, in or whatever? You. Yeah, you, Frank. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, for for, for uh for the act of trading on Doge, all I do is you know buy Doge, buy Doge, buy Doge. When I see when I see my 12, 14 percent gain, sell Doge, get that cash back, and then I sit there and wait, and then buy Doge. But so when I'm doing like when I'm day trading on uh, or when I'm playing Doge, literally I'm just straight playing Doge. I'm not bouncing from coin to coin. Uh, I, I've got the ones that you know. I've got the long-term ones that are bearing interest, and they just sit there. Uh, I, like I said, I, I add on sheep, and that's pretty much all I'm doing till sheep starts to to really, to really wake up because sheep's sheep's asleep right now. It, it really is, which has given me a great chance to you know ab, bring my average back down again because you know I've been playing. I started at seven forty, and I was buying all the way up into the, uh, all the way up into. The, 45 to 5,000 points. Uh, I, I sat on it. It ran up to 88, and then it turned around and came back down. And now it's, you know, uh, I don't even know what my average is right now. I, I've got it on my, uh, I've got it on my tracking on Webull where my average is. But I'm working on bringing that average back down to the actual range that uh, the sheep's running in. Because so, you don't have to do taxes. Sorry. Unless you actually cash out, right? If you go from one coin to another, you don't have to do taxes, correct? No, no. you still have to. You still have to. Uh, you're still recognizing gains when you leave a position. You're either going to recognize a loss or a gain on it. Doesn't matter if you if you just transfer it from one coin to another. It, it is still a gain that you are realizing, and and that's the, that's the thing about crypto because in the old days you could. There, there are ways you could like, you know, uh, if you're using OTC and uh, pink sheets, which are penny stocks, and you're trading off market, uh, you, you could hide, you could hide your positions because you know all you have to do is not turn in the actual paper. Now with everything being digitalized, you know, especially with crypto, there, there will always because cryptocurrency, there, there's no, you, you can't. Ask like I, I could send off to Ford be like, hey, I own these shares. Can I get paper copies of the stocks? Can I can I exit them off of my portfolio and have the paper versions of the stocks to hold on to? You know, as as a form of cold storage. See, you, you can pull your crypto into cold storage, but it still has a digital signature on there. So anything you do with crypto is automatically digitally reported. So yes, yeah, that's, that's through the blockchain. The blockchain. Yep. Yeah, and furthermore, so you're on a uh, centralized exchange. You're yeah, on Coinbase. Yeah. So Coinbase is going to report everything that you've done to the yep. IRS. But hey. they don't send you a 1099. No, yeah, you, you have do, to you do that. It, yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. They'll send so, it to I, you. I didn't do anything on my taxes. Maybe I shouldn't say it publicly, but okay. I didn't do anything with the Bitcoin on my taxes at all. Okay. So real quick, I'm going to jump in. Just want to say something. Uh, I've been cutting grass since 1993. I'm going to tell you Bowman, don't tell nobody else. Uh, you get a customer and they come to the door. They want to pay you each week. Uh, it's $30 cash. If they don't want to pay you cash, tell them it's $35 by check. And you know what? They're going to go back in the house and get you $30 cash. But like I got Robin Hood, uh, they sent a, a little uh, 1099 on my uh, income tax. I didn't claim it. They actually caught me on it this year. And I made like $65, which was a joke. And uh, Coinbase, I got Coinbase also. And, uh, but they didn't send nothing to me, so I haven't got caught yet. But I'm sure sooner or later they're going to catch up because – in the past, I didn't report such things as like uh, 1099s in regards to getting money from uh, my wife's retirement fund, and they actually caught it. So, so I think you so, will get caught. So, what am I supposed to do, though? How do you? you I'm not hiding it. I just don't know what to do. I guess. I think there's a difference between gains and a loss. That's that's the difference when so, it comes to taxes. So I've been to my in there, understanding. I've been in Sheba since october and doge lawn since probably november yeah so what am i how, i don't even understand how i would track that unless you i, mean, I don't know how would i you, you should be able to go into uh into whatever you're using coinbase or whatever it is there should uh -huh. be a document section where you can go and access it'll, it'll be under your account i never and it should have coinbase a, you don't Not get Coinbase, that in Coinbase? I've never seen it. No, but I got it through Robinhood. Coinbase and Gemini, they sent me nothing. So that's weird. See, my, my CPA, I asked him, and he said, as long as you didn't cash out, you shouldn't have to claim it. If you cash out, remove your asset from one to another. That's See, because I didn't know that. He didn't cash out. He said he did not. He did not right. cash no, out. Said, no. Or if you move it from one currency to another, that's still technically. Because I've moved it. The it out. Ethereum and Bitcoin. I think on Coinbase, when I actually started, I had to get Ethereum. I had to actually buy Ethereum and then transfer it to Shiba Inu. Yeah, okay. you get gas fees. Yep, high gas fees. Yep. So on your on your Coinbase, if you open up your Coinbase and in the home page, you have three little tabs in the top left. Click those tabs, and then underneath that, it says taxes. Hold on, on so the, going on here, Clonnie, Hang on. Is that on the phone? Yes. Hang on. Because I have the Coinbase app and the crypto app. Yep. Okay, I'm on Coinbase Pro. What did you say to do now, Kalani? There's three little tabs, and you Hold can... Hold on a second. I'm still loading. Is it the three little bars? Yes. Okay. Okay, I got it. The big, the big two bars of clock and the three bars will click on the three bars? Yep. Okay, I clicked on it. Yep. It should say taxes. Nope, it says you have no orders. Oh, I have I have Coinbase, not Coinbase Pro. Okay, yeah, I'm see, I just Coinbase have Coinbase Pro. Yeah. I just have Coinbase too. The blue yeah. blue icon with a white mm -hmm. C in it. So, this right here. Okay, I see that. Yep, I see it. So, and then from there, taxes. Right here. Oh, I never saw that part. Okay, I got to look deeper. Okay. Yeah. So what are they going to do for, you know, I mean, sure they ain't made no money, hardly, you know. Yeah. So again, not They're probably going to put you in jail for many, many years. <laughs> not a CPA, not financial advice. Can't give you any advice. But to my knowledge and understanding, you pay taxes on realized gains. That means you take it out of an asset, whether or not you move it to another one or you put it in your pocket. You pay taxes on money you made, not your original investment. Does that sound right? I'm pretty sure yeah. that sounds right. Not, so if you put $100, now you have 150 you got to pay the taxes on the $50. No, Correct. no, 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 yep. no. No, because he didn't take the money out yet, right? The money's still sitting there. You didn't take it out? But if I transferred it from Shiba to Ethereum or Ethereum to Bitcoin, yeah. then... Yeah, you made a gain, yes. then. You made a gain. Yep, you made yep. a gain. Yep. But if you say... Okay, so say, for instance, you had $1,000 of Bitcoin, 
and it was sitting in your account for a year, and you didn't touch it, now it's worth two thousand dollars. As long as you don't cash out that Bitcoin for a profit, from what I understand, you don't have to claim it. Does that make sense, Frank, or no? Yeah, as long if he if he has Bitcoin and he stays in Bitcoin, does it matter? The only thing is, if, if you have a crypto that you've staked and you've earned a dividend, or uh, you know, like you stake your Ethereum and you earn Sheeb, then that is a gain. But as mm-hmm. long as you, as long as you have your coin and it's non-staked, the, the the change in value does not affect your taxes because you haven't exited. As long as you don't get paid a dividend or gain an external source, then then it, it's unrealized. Okay, because because my friend, the day trader I talk about once in a while, uh, he says that if you have a profit and you leave it in there for more than one year, it drops to a lower tax bracket. Is that Sh- true? I don't know. Yeah. Short term yeah. and long term gain tax. Yes. Okay. So, I, I don't know what so it is, what, but he didn't say that to me. What do I do? What I mean, should I like call my CPA or and and? No. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this guy. I, I cannot advise on this. <laughs> um, so, I don't want so like... to to address your original question, like how do I do? What do I do? So, like you, I joined in October, and you know, pretty quickly within a few weeks, I asked myself, okay, what am I doing? You know, like I'm in this. I need to know what I'm doing with it, right? Yeah. And so for me, it was all numbers, right? We hit an all-time high. And from there, since that all-time high, I got in well below that all-time high, but I invested on the way up to dollar cost average up. And then I heavily dollar cost average down. So personally, it was, okay, I bought in when it was pretty high. And now I need to bring, to see any kind of profit, personally, I needed to buy lower, get more, to bring that average down to where I could see money being made. Now I'm a hodler, like I'm not a day trader at all. So even still today, I'm negative. But you know, long term, I know that my break even is around 3,400 points per token. That's my break even. You're lucky. I'm at 5,200. Yeah. So you know, it's for me. I had to sit down and say, okay, what? How much money do I want to have with this project, with this token? And for me, it may seem far-fetched, but that's a million dollars. And at what point do I see myself earning a million dollars? That's at one penny. How many, how many tokens do I need to hit a million dollars? It's 100 million tokens. And I foresee that happening, in my personal belief, in the next five to 10 years. So that's what I sat down and thought about. How much money do I want? How much do I need? And how long will it take? Yeah. For, so for, for, for Sheba, 100 million tokens? I, I'm not far off from there. <laughs> I got. So if it hits a penny 30, and you have 100 million token, that's a million dollars mm-hmm. at one penny. So that's that's how I that's how I wanted to figure it out. And when I'm able at a comfortable at a comfortable point, say I have a hundred thousand dollars in my portfolio, I'm gonna at maybe even ten thousand. I'm gonna take my original investment out, and then everything after that is passive income. It's all money making itself. I don't yeah. have to do anything because I took my original investment out. So uh, when are you guys gonna burn like trillions of coins so you guys can make me rich? <laughs> I'm burning zero. It ain't happening. <laughs> I am not burning my own money. It's there was a, I seen a deal that something about like 111 trillion coins are supposed to be burned in the next year or something. Man, that's like a small percentage. Like that, uh, over, with 549 quad or 104, what is it? 149 Five, trillion. 549 trillion, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But still, that would be substantial. What is that like five percent? I mean, it, it could bring the price up. But... Well, a hundred, or well, what it's five hundred and fifty trillion, and you burn a hundred trillion. So like yeah. 20 percent. 
but either way, like, that, yeah. that's that's a lot of. I mean, I don't see that much being burned this year personally. Like, that's quite a bit. It's yeah, that's hard. ridiculous amount. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to hit the billions. All I can say to that is Bowman, make sure you got gas in your lawnmower because you're gonna have to cut grass on Monday. It's not getting yeah. that high, not for many, many years. But I do see it maybe in 2030 getting to a penny. But that's if everything goes right, and if people don't uh, jump onto the next project and say the heck with a uh, Shiba Inu and mm -hmm. jump on to say Jet Funny Car Coin or whatever it might be. So you know, you know so why did something that I had thought about was. You know, so we have Bitcoin, right? It's a coin. We have Ethereum. It's a coin. But we've had all of these e ERC-20 tokens built on the blockchain of Ethereum, right? Yeah. So I've thought about, well, Dogecoin is a coin. It has its own blockchain and everything like that. You know, I've speculated and thought about the potential of tokens potentially being created using dogecoin as its you know like parent similar to ethereum you know it was just like a brief thought that i've had but you know it i don't know i'm not a developer but okay uh, it could happen maybe i guess okay but. so so my thoughts on that and frank might get mad at me for saying this i'm gonna say that like what the erc 20 coins you're talking about and like NFTs, I don't believe in NFTs at all. Um, the people that are creating these coins, whether it be uh, Dolange uh, Marge, um, whatever coins they might come out with in the future, the clay coin or whatever, all the people making these coins, all they really want to collect is your Ethereum. They want your Ethereum. And once you get your the Ethereum, because Ethereum is worth something, uh, they give you something that might be worth pennies, if that. So... That, that's that's how I think about these coins because uh, Ethereum is worth you know second uh, besides Bitcoin is the second most uh, value of a coin, so that that's the way I think about it. Uh, so it might be why, wrong. Did, why is Bitcoin so high? It's and, the OG. And then, like Shiba Inu's, like everybody says, you know, it's ten, twenty years or whatever till it hits a penny. Yeah. Well, why is why did Dogecoin just go freaking nuts? Okay, my opinion. I let Frank talk about Dogecoin, but I think Dogecoin has been around. It was a meme coin since 2013. It kind of started out as a joke against Bitcoin, and it became like the people's coin. And when I say the people's coin, it's kind of like you know what? We're a nobody. We cut grass, or, or we dig ditches, or whatever you might want to say. And they just, everybody jumped on that bandwagon and got behind them and they got pumped because publicity, publicity will drive the price of a coin way up because people are going to be like, Oh my God, this coin's going to be worth X amount of dollars. I better buy it. Just like we did with sheep. I did myself at 52,000 or 5,200, I should say. And uh, that, that's, that's what I think about Dogecoin, but, but Bitcoin, uh, it was made by Satoshi in a, uh, it's just a store of value. So, so many uh, big people believe in Bitcoin and uh, I'm not sure where I'm going with this Bitcoin thing, but many, many financial institutions are, are backing that because they believe in it. And, and I do believe that being, you know, since uh, Satoshi made it in 2009, it's worth a lot of money. And as for Dogecoin, uh, there's an unlimited amount of supply of what we keep making it. So that, you know, it's kind of tough, but like I said, it all, in my opinion, it falls back to what people are talking about to generate interest and generate interesting in, in a coin is going to drive the price up because nobody wants to miss out on making the next million dollars. Frank, I don't know if I made sense, but you can make sense of it if I didn't. Yeah. Uh, do, do the value in it came from the hype. And really when you think about it, uh, and this, I've used this example before and it, it'll make, it'll really make a lot of sense when you look at the value of the coins. There, there are different brackets, uh, or not just coins, all crypto all crypto assets, we'll say. So you've got, you know, you've got your, your regular coins that are, uh, you got coins that we'll, we'll call them the sub-dollars. 
And the sub dollars, they're the ones, you know, you, you take the change out of your pocket when you get home and you throw it in a bowl. And those are those are those coins, the sub dollars, you know, you're 99. You, you go to the store, you got 99 cents. You come home, you empty your pockets, you throw your change in the change drawer and it just sits there and accumulates and it, you just have it. And then there are the, the coins that, you know, you, you see some of these coins and they're valued, you know, may, maybe five bucks up to 100 bucks. And those would be like your wallet coins, you know, the, the coins that the coins that you really should be building utility around the ones that, you know, you, you know, places that will accept cryptocurrency for purchases, you know, when they start moving toward and it, it is digital dollar is coming. But, you know, people are building utility into them where you, know, you go and you, you have this coin and, it, you know, it, it's backed and it's five dollars a coin. Well, you can go spend that five dollars. And then you get the, the granddaddies, you, you get Ethereum and you get Bitcoin. And those would be like your, you know, your Federal Reserve Treasury notes, if so it like makes sense like that. Account. No, as far as with Doge and Ethereum, it goes beyond those. But those would be like. The rest of the currencies are based off these heavy hitters. Just like you know, back when we had, uh, back when the uh, back when all currency was on the gold standard in the U.S., there was a block of gold in a treasury or at Fort Knox. A block of gold was ensuring the value of the dollar, and that's what Bitcoin and Ethereum are doing. They are basically the granddaddies that are ensuring the value of all cryptos that fall under them. So if you understand, you know, old school banking, how it used to work when we were on the gold standard, then that's kind of the way it's really uh, digital assets are being based off the, the Bitcoin standard, the Ethereum standard. So they, they are setting the value for the rest of the market. It's kind of largely why you see, you know, if Bitcoin and Ethereum fall, the whole market falls, yep. you know, like that's more or less. Now we did have a weird thing happen a few days ago where the whole market was down and shit for some reason was way up, but you know, that's, that's not something you typically see. So it's like, you know, a lot of the currencies tokens and such, like they follow the trend of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin's up. You'll typically see everything else up. Yep. If it's down, it's down. That's true. Very true. I believe that 100% with Bitcoin. Yeah. But but anyways, so Bowman, go ahead. Bowman, go ahead. So it's a national treasury. No. no. Not, not no. to be taken literally. No. 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 I, to paraphrase and to understand, Frank, I think he was saying all the tokens and currencies that we see in the crypto realm, um, you know, we... Like I just said, you know, if Bitcoin's up, other currencies come up. So people are trusting and buying into Bitcoin. And, you know, if people are buying into Bitcoin, hey, I should buy some more SHIB. If Bitcoin is being sold off, then, hey, maybe I should probably sell my Doge. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, that was just kind of what I was picking up. So where, where Bitcoin goes, the rest of them follow, kind of. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. More or less. Time. Yeah. Uh, so, so if I could say something without being uh, negative or rude or nasty, uh, like say shit, we're all talking about. Uh, everybody wants to get rich overnight, and it's it's so affordable that you could take a hundred dollars or two hundred bucks or a thousand dollars and throw it throw it into that pot. And hopefully, it gets, you get rich off of it. It might happen, but chances are it's going to take many many years to get to that point. So, if myself personally. <laughs> If I had $100 to invest and I didn't want that $100 to become, you know, a millionaire and be safe, I would put the 100 bucks in a Bitcoin. And in two years, 100 bucks might be worth $300, but it's a lot more better chance of it being secure or put the 100 bucks in ship and might be worth, you know, $40 in two years. But then again, it might be worth $4,000 in two years. So, yeah. Dan, if you're doing that, for you got to make the decision what what you want to do with with the, with the money. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I just I, 
I just got into it because I don't the YouTube al- algorithm said, yeah. "Hey, they click on so, this video," and I did, and everybody's like, "Buy it now! Buy it now! Buy it now!" So I bought it. So <laughs> something no other reason. To, something to think about is, say you're looking at something like ship, right? And um, there's a saying: it's a uh, "when in doubt, zoom out." Right. So you're looking at the graph and everything and yeah, yeah, it looks like crap. It's red. Well, zoom out, go to all time, right. From the time it was released to where it is now. And especially right now, you can do that across the board to any currency. They're all down from their all time highs uh, later last year, the October, September, October area. And for me, I think about myself in turn, or I think about it like, okay, so we'll just bring up some random asset. We'll say SHIB. And the all-time high was 88, 8,900 points per token. Yeah. 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 And where it's at now, it's like, what, 25, 24, 88? And Moving 24 to 26 range, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, say I have 100 bucks, and I truly believe that the price is going to raise or rise to, like, we'll say 5,000. So... I'm confident that my hundred dollars is going to double its price to two hundred dollars. You see, you see what I'm getting to. So it's like, you know, for me, look at a graph or look at the yeah, look at the graph, like where its price is now. Look at the all-time highs, and if I like what I see, and you know, the two x, three x, whatever, you know, I'll look into that project and you know, think like, okay, why did it go down? What does it have going for it? You know, do I believe that it can get back to those all-time highs or even surpass those all-time highs within a year, six months, whatever? You know, so those are the things I look at. Not so much, man, I'm down five bucks on my $20 investment. It's, you know, in the next three months, is that 20 bucks going to turn into 40? Or is my 500 going to turn into a thousand kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, when, I, when I got into it, that was a big thing. It was, is it going to break a... a uh, 7,000 points per coin or whatever it was mm-hmm. when I got into it. Cause it was like October 29th or 31st, somewhere around there, Halloween. Mm-hmm. And that, that was the big thing. Well, she break to 7,000 points per coin. And, and then mm-hmm. it went up to what? 89 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it fell all the way down. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, hell yeah. I mean, cause like, I got in it, and then the next day, I'm like, hey, all these people are saying we're going to get to 7000 I'm like, hell yeah, come on, what's going on there? And it's like $2. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree 100% with that. I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, Bowman, uh, the best advice in my – what I believe is uh, if you get some good gains, actually sell the coin. Uh, do not fall in love with it because it's going to come back down. Um, just the other day, I'm kicking myself in the butt. Uh, talk about stocks. Uh, I got 110 AMC stocks. I paid 17 bucks for them roughly. So I had $1,700. It, uh, for, it spiked up to $34 a share. I could have doubled my money. I should have sold them, but I didn't because I was scared that it would go higher. So I lost out on you know doubling my money. It's another 1700 bucks, which would be great since since I bought in the middle of January and been slowly buying at them. So to make 1700 bucks in, in two months would be great. And I made the mistake over the last three times with Bitcoin. It shot up, you know, I could have made a couple dollars, not a lot of dollars because I don't have much Bitcoin, but I could have made, you know, two, three, 400 bucks at a time. And the last three times I shot myself in the foot by saying, Oh, I can't sell them cause it's going to go higher. And, uh, every single time I did that, the prices always come back down to lower than what I could have sold them for. So, uh, I do believe with not fall in love with it. And uh, if for some reason uh, you should miss out on a once in a lifetime uh, gain, which I don't want to do, uh, it wasn't meant to be. That That's what I think. So what do you think about that, Frank? I mean. Uh, uh, certainly with, you know, I've made it no secret on, uh, on my streams that I, I do pl- I play covered calls on AMC. I, I've never hidden the fact uh, I sold, you know, I sold those 90 shares in order to, to finance options trading. You know, yeah, d- diamond handing, diamond hand every share you have. Don't give a single share back. Yeah, that sounds cool when you're saying it. You know, it, it's cool to be part of the community. But the fact is, 
all the people that are diamond handing and i have a portion of my amc that is diamond i've got a, a portion that i will not touch until the moas yeah but then i've got a part a part of my amc position that is making me money every single week and you they can sit there you know people can unsubscribe to my channel because oh he, he's not a true diamond head eight yeah. Matt, while they're sitting there holding i'm sitting there making money yeah. mm -hmm. i lost i lost 1700 bucks yeah, they, but you yeah. don't know that's that's what i'm worried that's, about yeah that's the well, thing and that's why you, you know simon simon was going to do covered calls i told him you know, if you do not want to lose those shares set a stop loss yeah. i y'all heard me say it y'all heard me say it a hundred times during live streams set a stop loss to protect yourself especially if you're selling if you are selling and you don't want to lose your shares set a stop loss if you are you know if you're just looking to capture gains and roll that position and you know run the wheel okay get a level that you are a hundred percent comfortable selling at you know that's uh you, you have to when it comes to the world of options you have to know what your intention is getting into the trade you have to have a plan and if your plan involves keeping your shares you set a stop loss yeah hey Bowman. So when you set us when you set us a, a stop loss does that automatically sell it or does that transfer it to something else or how does that work Oh, well, we'll see options. Uh, when it comes to options trading, it, you, have, you have a, a block of shares in a company that you're playing with. Now, if uh, if I have a if I have a hundred shares that I don't want to say say I sell a covered call, which means I'm putting my my shares up for sale and I'm collecting a premium. So if I collect a hundred dollars on it. If I'm willing to risk twenty percent then I can have it set up to where if it goes up to, if the value goes up to $120, I'll automatically buy that contract back to exit the position and keep my shares, to keep from losing them. That's what a stop loss does. Uh, same thing if you're buying. When you buy options, you pay a premium. If I pay $100, but I'm, I don't want to, you know, if they lose value over time, they lose value when, when the price moves. So if if I'm willing to risk twenty percent and I paid a hundred, then I would say at uh, if it drops down to eighty dollars value on the contract, buy it back. You know, I'll, I'll lose that twenty dollars, but I don't want to lose any more than that. Okay. And then, so go ahead, Frank. So I'm going to say something when you're done with that statement. The, the, the stop loss just when you have a stop loss, your position is already turning against you. You're already losing money, but it's you're setting what an acceptable loss is on your account to where if you're willing to risk 10%, 20%, you know, of the position you enter, you set that and you're like, I am okay losing this much for the potential to make a whole bunch more. And it's, it's just a way of protecting yourself. Okay. So, so my thoughts on that Bowman is real quick. Say you spend a hundred bucks on ship, whatever the price is, and it gets down to 90 bucks and all your coins. You'd set a stop loss on your uh, Coinbase account, and then once it got to ninety dollars, it would sell all those coins, and you'd still have ninety bucks in your account instead of it going to eighty dollars or seventy dollars and losing more money. So that's okay. that's what a stop loss actually is. And then you could always either buy back in or go to a different coin. So just want to try to make it as simple as possible. And then yeah. uh, Bowman, what, what time zone are you in? I'm What's in Central. Time? Central, Frank, you're yeah. Central, right? Yeah, I'm central. Okay, so I'm Bowman, in uh, every Southwest day, Missouri. Yeah, I'm from New York. Frank's from Minnesota, and Kalani, you're from Indiana, right? Yep. Yeah. So every every day we meet up on Frank's channel Monday through Friday, at about what what it's twelve thirty your time, right, Frank? Twelve thirty central, roughly. Uh, if I'm home for lunch, it's usually yeah. about twelve fifteen is when I go live. It's central time. And he goes on for about an hour and, and Frank will take the time moment to answer any questions you got and, and show you because he, when he's on his computer, he's got really nice charts and everything because he's big time. I'm just a little grass cutting guy. And, uh, 
<laughs> he definitely he will uh he'll answer your questions and if not he'll come back on in the evening like we're doing now uh we start out with just a 20 minute chat about cutting grass which i'm sure you know about because I, I watch your videos and yeah. uh, all of a sudden it went over to uh, uh making money but these guys uh i do follow them and they also follow me back with respect so i do ask you if uh they did subscribe to you, which I'm sure they did. That you please subscribe back to them because uh, they're yeah, good I guys. Yeah, I subscribed to to one of them. The other one I couldn't find their channel. I don't Frank? think. Frank. Okay, so that's you, probably Kalani. But uh, I put it uh, in the chat. Please subscribe. These are these are good guys, just like Drew, and uh, <laughs> and they'll point you in the right direction. I mean, I know I know a lot of uh, you know uh, things in life, but not not you know real good things. And and sometimes when the grass doesn't need to be cut, you know that when I show up to a customer's house. I cut the grass anyways because I got to make money. So yeah. you know what I'm saying there. But yeah. you know, ask any questions you want; they'll ask, they'll answer anything. So you know. And then, and our friend Kalani on the bottom with the headphones on, he's like the, our new trimmer guy. <laughs> we're learning, we're learning about the business. So you know, I'm just the old guy with a couple bucks driving around the truck. Frank's got all the knowledge in regards to uh, stocks and cryptos. I know some about cryptos and mining. I know nothing about stocks and Kalani. He's the young Jedi Knight. You know? <laughs> he's gonna get his coffee in the morning, and he's gonna put the gas in the trimmers, and uh, he's gonna point Kalani's stuff out. Like, oh, aren't you gonna trim it back in the garage? But nobody's trimming back there for the last couple of weeks. So, uh, um, so that's where we're at. We're, we're we're a good group of people. We support each other. You know, and like I said, and I met you through Drew, and uh, we support yeah. Drew also. And uh, Unfortunately, I missed Drew the other night because he comes on too late. He usually go to bed at nine o'clock, which I'm an hour past my bedtime. But, uh, <laughs> but check him out, you know, during the day. Like you subscribe to him, and uh, he's got the bell, and he'll answer any questions you got. And if you don't know what the answer is, he's not going to blow smoke up your butt. He's going to tell you, you know, the truth. I don't know. Yeah. Just like I do the same thing. Hey, if I can't do that job, I don't say, "Oh, well, I'll let you know next week." I just say, "Hey, ma'am, that job's out of my league. I can't cut that tree down. That's a tree service, you know." So yeah. But go ahead, jump in there, Kalani. Our young, or he's our young Jedi Knight. <laughs> uh, really, not much else, man. But uh, for me personally, I my biggest thing is staying informed, right? Like I, I really want to know what's going on, and I am heavy into YouTube and finance right now, here lately especially. And so I follow and watch a lot of videos on what other people are doing, what they're paying attention to and stuff like that. And I have a pretty decent list of people. If you're interested, um, you know, they talk about different cryptocurrencies, what's going on financially with the economy, you know, even going further out into like building your portfolio with real estate or investments for retirement you know, stuff so do like you, that. Do you watch, uh, I think his name's Clay Bro? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we all know each other. <laughs> uh, okay. Because yeah. uh, I'm one of the expert on options from Clay Bro's channel. My channel actually is. <laughs> my, my channel is a result of, uh, it, it's a spin off of Clay Bro's channel. That's where mine okay. came from. Because yeah. I, I watched him when I first got into it, and then uh, I watched him quite a bit. Don't say nothing I mean, bad about him. Don't hey, say nothing bad. Care. If he's got something bad, I'll say it. Um, but, I, yeah, I don't have nothing bad. But he went live all the time, and I'm like, I can't even keep up with this crap. I, I can't. It's too much. So I haven't well, watched him in several months. But. You know, if if I may, um, <laughs> not to be pushy, but you should. You know, you want to be informed. You want to know what's going on with your asset. You know, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, you know, I, if, if there's a project coming out, if there's something being done with my asset, you know, that could push or hinder the price, like, I want to know, you know what I mean? Like, see, and that's where, that's where I'm different. I think you guys look at it as an investment or, or whatever. I look at it as just yeah. something to do. Like, yeah, gambling probably like this was yeah. what everybody was talking about. So I just threw some money in it and just mm -hmm. let it sit there. I don't, yeah. you and guys get into it more than I do, I guess. Well, and Ooh. if that's the case, then, you know, learn like what I'm doing now is, you know, learn the techniques and things to, to effectively gamble, you know, in your terms or trade kind of like yeah. what 
Frank's doing, you know, like me, like I'm, I have a lot to learn. Like even when I'm watching Frank's stuff, like he's talking about the 13, 50 moving averages and yep. stuff and shorts and stops and calls and puts. And I'm just like, I know vaguely what the Bollinger is. I'm still picking up what he's talking about or what Frank's talking about. And like, you know, what your moving average is and uh, the volatility with the Bollinger bands and, you know, when's a good time to sell, when's a good time to buy, but I'm not actually doing it yet because I know I'm still ignorant. And I need to learn. I don't want to just, you know, take these uneducated risks and, you know, sell at a low when it could have been much higher kind of thing. Personally. So, Frank, it's, it's, that's the thing that, on, on my channel, uh, on my channel, you will get a lot of technical analysis. Mm -hmm. You will get a, my, my channel at times, depending upon what kind of a role I'm on and you know what the market's going on, there are times I think my channel does hit a little bit of information overload because I, I want to get as much information out to as many people as possible. So, yeah, I, I give you a lot, a lot of numbers and a lot of, you know, to, to help people understand not what's going on, but, you know, why, why is it, uh, you know, why is this stock moving like that? Why, why is everyone jumping on this? You know, what what do the numbers on the screen mean? That's uh, that's a lot of what you get on my channel. Mm -hmm. And then with so, um, you know, with Claybro, you know, he's he really likes to talk about you know news specifically with uh, Shib, and I haven't watched a lot of his uh, um, AMC, but assuming it's the same thing you know what's new with shib today you know like the developers are doing this you know how this can affect shib you know what's going on with the metaverse how this can affect shib what's going on with the utility you know stuff like that yeah see he's big into the amc i think too right? yeah oh yeah hey frank read the comments the last comment i wrote you'll laugh hmm <laughs> You see it, Clowny? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Small world. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Wow. So is so Frank, what was your goal when you started doing all this? Like retirement or what? Uh, I, you know, I got in the market and I was you know, I was looking towards uh long I was looking towards a retirement portfolio and I started, you know, started just watching videos on YouTube. And it came across the options, and so about uh, about a month or two into into investing, I spent two months just playing options. I, I found I found some you know cheap stocks, stocks that were under two dollars a share. Bought a bunch, of them and just started playing with options, learning how they worked, and th then I found about AMC and started doing my research. And, so, you know, at this point, I, I already started, you know, working technical analysis. So I'm looking at the, the technicals and looking at, you know, the, the financials uh, because long term investment. I already learned how to, you know, look at a company, look at their balance sheet, look at, you know, look at their earnings reports, you know, understand financially where the company is. And then I saw that, you know, I saw uh, the short side. And I'm like, oh, my God, this this is a potential gold mine. So I ended up jumping on Clay's channel, and it. I got on there, and you know, we'd be they'd be talking about it. I'm like, well, yeah, uh, th th this looks like a good price for the end of the week because there's so many options there. So it got to the beat to the point where two or three times a week on Clay's channel, I would give them an option. You know, for AMC, I tell them, hey, this this is what the option chain looks like. This is what we should expect to the end of the week. Mm -hmm. So that that was all cool and everything, and then all of a sudden I got a message on Twitter from one of the guys on uh, Clay's channel. He's like, "Hey, I, can, can I talk to you because I've got these options, and I want to know if I'm screwed." I'm like, "Well, I'm at, I'm at my regular job right now, but if you don't have a problem calling, I can talk to you a bit." Spent an hour on the phone with him, explaining you know where, where he's at with them, you know possible ways you know he could try to exit and minimize his loss and i realized man there are people that are losing serious fucking money 
because they don't understand the way it works. And that, that was the, that was on a Friday and the following Monday I launched my channel because it, I, so often I'd hear about people, you know, not understanding options and they get fucking hammered. And I'm like, Dude, I, I, I've got to, I've got to help, help out any way I can. So that's, uh, it went from long-term investment to now I've got these options and I'm learning how to make money, you know, actively make money with them to let's help everybody else, you know, maybe not make money, but help them, you know, stop losing money. Minimize their losses. Yep. Yeah. See, and, and I don't get into all that. The only thing I look at is like, I'll, I'll zoom out, you know, like to the one year, what was she doing? And it seems pretty consistent in my mind. And I'm stupid to this. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just kind of, you're, you're talking kind of foreign to me with all that crap. Yeah. It's kinda, I don't know nothing. And there's a saying that, uh, you know, only invest the money you're willing to lose. Oh, yeah. So. And I only have, uh, like, I don't care. I'll tell you, like, $150 in all of it. Like, that's it. I, you know, I don't, I didn't do it to, I just did it because it was the thing to do, I guess, at that time. Mm -hmm. And then Clay's like, oh, there's been millionaires made. They invested $5 in February, March, whatever it was, and now they're millionaires. And I'm like, no. done, done deal. All right, let's put a little bit in there. We missed the boat on that one or the bus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, th those were guys that were in way, way, way before I was. And so that's where I got into Dojalon because I was I was just looking through them, and it was so cheap. And I'm like, you know, if we get in now in a couple of years or year or whatever, maybe this could actually make something. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I put – what did I put? Fifty or thirty dollars in? I have three hundred million coins. Mm -hmm. So you know, at what a penny a, a coin, you'd be at thirty thousand dollars. Three hundred million right, or yeah. three hundred thousand, yeah. No, three hundred million. Not at a penny. Oh, not at a penny. No, yeah. If it hit a dollar, my bad. But that's a good way of thinking about it. You know, looking at those projects that are fresh and brand new. Um, you, you, you know, you have something like, uh, I think there was Squid Game. You know, everyone hopped on it because it was a meme. And, and, and you know, it, it got rug pulled bad, like very, very bad. And it was one of those things where everyone was hopping on the train. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you got to look into the project. You know, look at its market cap, look at its holders, stuff like that. You know, just investing blindly into a project and not knowing what what everything is within the project, you know, you can, it, it's likely that, you know, yeah, I could a, a million X or 10,000 10, X or whatever, but you know, there's always the possibility if you don't know what you're getting into that you can also lose all your money. Yeah. So when you see it go up, like I'll get the notifications from crypto and Coinbase mm -hmm. and it's like, Oh, it's up 5%. Is that, does that mean my money's up five percent? Also, I guess. No, the currency's up. No. Okay. So yeah. the best the best way to explain that would be the situation I'm in. I bought Shib at fifty two hundred, and it's been down so much. It doesn't matter if it goes up a hundred percent. I'm still losing. So that five percent for the day, or it's down two percent for the day, or up eleven percent for the day. That's at the the current. Uh, close price from the day before, um, but actually cryptos don't close. They're open all the time. Uh, so it's just saying that, you know, on their chart or what they're charting, that it's up for so much per day. But even though, cause it's up 10%, you know, if you're, if it's at 2,500, 3,000, say it's at right now, I'm, I'm still way down. So, I mean, I'm happy to see it go up, but it's got to go up a lot more to get back to where I'm at to break even. But, it's also a waiting game, so yeah. I need to uh, just give so, it time. I mean, so I want to, I could sell it and jump ship and lose my money, but you know, I think hopefully it's going to go up because the money I invested in it, you know, I don't want to say it's money I got to lose because I don't want to lose no money, but 
I'm just going to let it ride, basically, like if you're at the casino. Just let your money sit there, and hopefully it's going to go up. So um, just a hypothetical here. So say, you know, it's noon today, hypothetically. No, and it's, it, it's 10 o'clock here. What? I'm just, it's, it's hypothetical. So Because oh, okay. he was saying, you know, oh, my phone says I'm up 5%. So we'll say hypothetically today it's noon, right? And the mm -hmm. price of SHIB is at 2,500 points per token. 24 hours later, it's at 2,500 points per token. So it, it would be 0% for the yeah. day. Okay. Because yeah. so I'll see it'll be like like one day, I don't know, last week or something, it was up like 15%. And I told her, I'm like, yeah, it's up 15%. And then I go look at my money and I'm like, it's up like, I, I, got, I think I made a quarter or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You should have sold. You won. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get off to bedtime and get ready for bed. Yeah, I gotta get the kids to bed and get to bed myself. So, excellent. Well, well, thank you guys. Thank you, Frank Bowman and, and Kalani uh, Bowman. If they subscribe to you, please subscribe back. These are good guys. They'll help you out. And like I said, Frank's on Monday through Friday. Just watch for his notifications. About 12.30, 12.45 your time, Central Time. I'm on Easter Time. Aklani, our young Jedi Knight, he knows more than he wants to admit. So <laughs> got to share his knowledge with us. Uh, Frank, thank you so much. So if you guys have anything else to say, thank you. Let me know. I, yeah. I just I appreciate you guys learning me a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Knowledge is king, man. No, cash is king. Cash. Cash yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. Cash Cash is trash. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't have to cash. claim cash on my taxes, though. <laughs> cash will bring you 0% interest. Oh, well, yeah, that's true, but at least Uncle Sam ain't taking the money back at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, but see, knowledge, know about that with cash. knowledge can make you money, and it's tax-free. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys. Okay, yep. thank yep. you so much. Thank you, everybody. Right, okay. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Kalani. Thank you, uh, Bowman, you going back on Kalani or no? You gonna you doing your uh, game tonight or no? No, I well I was gonna game and do some streaming, but I decided to stay and hang out. So oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry to keep you then. Oh hey, I don't care. I got to hang out with you guys. Not mad at you. My wife's mad at me. She's sleeping already. So yeah, my girlfriend's in the bed. So and Frank, I don't know, Frank. <laughs> what's up with Frank? What you doing? Oh, uh, well, I've got uh, 191 laps left of the race at Martinsville. I've got... Uh, hey, what channel is that on? What channel is Martinsville on? Uh, Fox Sports 1. Hold on, I'll put that on. Give me a second, I'll put my TV on. Keep talking, go ahead. Right, yeah, well. I've got that, and then I've got uh, two hours and 48 minutes until the Formula 1 race in Australia starts. I'll probably get a little bit of sleep before I get... Uh, you know, get a little bit of sleep, wake up, and 2 o'clock I have the uh, IndyCar Grand Prix of uh, Long Beach. So i am got to try to find some way to get a little bit of sleep in there in between all the races. You're going to stay up that late to 2 o'clock? That's crazy. Probably. I'm looking forward to Fox Sport 1. I'm looking right now. Well, all right, guys, I'm out of here. It's been really fun hanging out. Oh, and thank I'm honored, you, yep, I'm honored to hang out with you guys and do this live stream. It was really cool. You going to play video games tomorrow night or what? Uh, maybe. I would like to. If I play it, I probably won't be streaming. But we'll see. Maybe. Okay. okay. Get that concurrent viewer. <laughs> the, uh, like I said, last night, I didn't get no notification on YouTube, but I got it from Twitch, though. So. Yeah, last night I was just trying to get my uh, YouTube set up. So. I got to check my YouTube thing because I'm on your channel. I subscribe to it. All right. Well, you guys have a good night. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you later. Yep. Later. I'm almost there. I got this stupid ass uh, Roku that I use in my cable system, and it's uh, super slow. They're racing right now, then? You're saying they're live? Uh, yep. Yeah, NASCAR Cup Series. Maximum pain relief four thousand. It says. Let's see. Yeah, blue, blue emu. Yep. It's on. It's on a commercial by me right now. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I think I'm uh, I'm just a little bit behind because I had to pause it a few times when I jumped over on my computer to check stuff on uh, on uh, crypto and on the everything else. I, I paused it. So my commercials right now. Okay, so it's Martinville 75, 75th anniversary. They're showing a bunch of old cars flying around the track now in black and white, actually. Oh, yep. And I'm finally caught up. NASCAR 75th anniversary. Now they're showing the track from an aerial view. That track is so small. That's crazy how small it is. Yeah, it's a, a half mile uh, yeah. paper. That kind of reminds me of the track by us in regards to uh, how small it is. That's yeah, where so a lot of people, you know, get their start is on uh, short tracks. You know, the local short track, the dirt tracks, you know, Outlaw, yeah. Le Legend Series. It says uh, Byron number 24 is winning. Yeah, he needs to go in the wall. Him, Elliot, uh, Larson, Elliot Sackman, yeah. Larson, Bowman, all those Hendrick Chevys need to go in the wall. No, I like Chevys. Chevys are my car. I, I like Chevys. I just don't like Hendrick Chevys. Oh. I drive a Chevy. You got a Ford, though, so I can see why you like Fords. Yeah. I I, I mainly cheer for uh, Ford and Toyota. I, I like the, the Joe Gibbs Toyotas, uh, K Kyle Busch and... Uh, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr. Uh, I cheering for them. Yeah, Rusty Bullen, or Rusty Dillon are showing now. Oh, Rustin Dillon, Rustin Dillon. Oh, Austin Dillon. Yeah, Christopher Bell now. It's saying Christopher Bell. He's a Toyota too. He's one of your guys. Yeah, Christopher. He, he's one of the Gibbs. There are only uh, two teams that run Toyotas. Uh, Gibbs has four Toyotas, and twenty three eleven. Uh, which is owned by Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, who's in it now? I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, Michael Jordan's an owner. He he's an owner on the the forty five car and the twenty three car. Yeah, forty five is Kurt Busch. It says right now. Yeah, C Kurt Busch and uh, uh, Bubba Wallace. Those are the those are the cars owned by Michael Jordan. That's cool. Raptor twenty four. The old Jeff Gordon number twenty four. Raptor. Yep. Okay, my friend Frank, I'm gonna get going. I gotta feed the horses. I gotta get ready for bed too. So, yep, I gotta. I'm gonna lay down, relax, watch my racing. Well, thank you for stopping in tonight. I had a lot of fun. I'll catch you on Monday then. Yep, no problem. Okay, thank you. Good night. Yep, good night.